this video we're going to be designing armor in ZBrush. Hey, so in this video we're going to be designing armor in ZBrush. What we're going to be doing is the, the metal part and some cloth. We're not going to be following exactly this reference. It's more as, uh, a reference on what we make. We're going to be designing the actual armor itself because the design part is pretty fun. So first off, uh, what software are we going to use? We're going to be using ZBrush to create the high poly. Then we're going to be using Maya to make the low poly. Then we're going to be using Marmoset to do the bakes and the renders. And we're going to be using Substance Painter to texture. And if you want, you can switch out Maya with another 3D model program like Blender or Max or whatever. Because it's going to be the same, the same thing more or less. It's just the, the theory part that I'm going to teach you. So talking about that, who is this tutorial aimed for? It's going to be more aimed towards beginners that don't have too much experience with the full pipeline or with creating stuff in ZBrush. So it's going to be a bit more slow and we're going to be going through setting up ZBrush, the, the interface and stuff. But we're not going to be talking about what ZBrush is and how to navigate and all that. So you do need to have a very basic level of ZBrush and Maya and Paint and all that to follow this. And with the basic level, I mean that you need to know what the software is do and how to navigate the software. But it's going to be a pretty beginner friendly tutorial. So let's jump right into it. So we're going to be modeling the whole armor from scratch. Because I think that's the best way to learn and it's the most fun. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get a base mesh for the body. Because we're not going to be actually making the body or rendering the body. I don't want to waste time modeling a body. Because it takes a lot of time. The first thing we're going to do is open up the light box by hitting Q. Then we can go to project and we can go to mill CPR. Just hit no. Now that's going to open up this project with the body. So we're going to be hitting shift P to hide the grid over there. Now we're going to go to geometry, shift D to lower the subdivisions. We're going to be deleting the higher subdivisions because we don't need them. The only thing that we need is the volumes. So the first thing that we need to change is the pose to be a little bit more natural. And we need to get rid of the legs as we don't need it anyway. We're gonna hit Shift F to bring up the, the wireframe. We're gonna hit Control Shift to go to our masking. So here we can get rid of some stuff. If we do Ctrl Shift Alt, we can just drag over the whole mesh and unhide everything. I'm gonna hold down Ctrl Shift, go to the brushes. I'm gonna select to select a lasso. We can just skip this note. So now anytime we hold Ctrl Shift down, we get the select lasso. So I'm gonna find a poly loop. This one on up, so I'm holding down Ctrl Shift. And clicking on the edge and that's gonna hide the whole loop. Actually that's a little bit too much. I'm gonna control Z. Let's just drag something out by holding Ctrl Shift Alt selecting what we want to delete. So I think like that is pretty good. Now to delete we're gonna go to modify topology. One thing that I do want to teach you in this series is to work faster so every time we want to delete something we have to go to modify topology and look for the delete hidden it's going to take up a lot of time because you will be using this tool pretty often so what we want to do for the tools that we use often is create our own menu so we can click here just double click it's going to create some space now we just drag this away can make our own menu. Preferences, config, enable, customize. 
So what we can do now is go to custom UI. I'm going to be creating a new menu. I'm just going to call this pitch. Now as you can see, we got a new menu to pop up right there. So if we click it, I'm going to change locations to match the naming. So here we have fix. We click it again. Now on this little ball like thing, your cursor will change when you select it. We can drag it off to the side. Now if we hold down Ctrl Alt and left click to delete hidden, we can start to move that button. So we're just going to be moving it to the left all the way to our fixed menu and you'll see a white outline. That means that we're placing it in the menu. I'm just going to be dropping it over there. Now we have our delete hidden in there. Let's also go ahead and grab the mirror and weld. It doesn't matter where you put it, it just matters that you put the, the right things that we need in here. We're also going to be using weld points. Do the weld distance. Don't worry if you don't know what these things do. For now, just know that we're going to be using them quite often in ZBrush. So I'm going to put them right here. So you can also change the order by just Ctrl Alt and dragging them in a different place. We'll be using delete by symmetry quite often. But now that's all we need from our fixed menu. So now we can go to preference, config, and disable, enable, customize. So what we can do now is go to our fixed menu and anytime we need to use one of the buttons, we can go fix, we can do it delete hidden. But it's still very annoying because we need to go there every time. So what we can do is we can set our custom hotkey to this menu. So if we go to fix, we hit Ctrl and Alt and then left mouse click, we can assign a hotkey. I'm going to be assigning the F2 key, but you can assign any key you want. You do need to be careful because if it's already assigned to a key, you're going to lose that. But generally, I never use the F2, so it's safe for me. Now that we have that, I can click F2. And you can see we have our menu pop up right at the mouse. So now if I go back a little bit in history, let's say I'm going to delete the legs. So I have them hidden. I don't need to go here and look for where the button is. Press F2 and delete hidden. Now to make sure that we can save the menu, we go to preference, we want to save the UI, if you want to make it like really safe, or we can just hit store config. Now anytime you'll start ZBrush, it's going to be like this. I'm going to close this up to create some more space. Now that we have that, let's continue. The next thing that I want to focus on is changing the position of the body to be more natural. I think modeling like this can be great for the rigging, but making the high poly stage a lot more annoying to work with. So I want to put the arms in a more natural pose, like that, like the concept. Press W to bring transpose. Now we can start to mask that out. So I don't really like using this gizmo for this that kind of stuff. I prefer using the old one. So we can go transform. We can press that. This will switch to the old one. Just like our custom menu, we can assign it to a hotkey by Ctrl Alt click. And I'm gonna press 9. Again, it's going to tell you that's already assigned, but I don't use the hotkey, so it's okay. So now we press 9 to switch. B and V, just to get out of the transpose. And I'm going to hold Ctrl, Alt, to start erasing some of that mask, the shoulders. I'm going to hit W again to go back to our transpose. Now I'm going to move this down a little bit to be in a more neutral position. Now for here I'm pressing Ctrl and dragging it out to clear the mask. 
If I go back here, one thing you notice, if I control drag over the model, it's not gonna work. So we need to make sure that we do it outside of the model. So P and V again to get rid of the transpose line. I'm gonna press S and adjust the draw size. I'm gonna smooth this out a little bit and hit Shift F to get rid of the wireframe. This is gonna make this body look a little bit more natural. So you wanna be quite fast with this and not too precise because we're just gonna be working on the armor anyway. But I do wanna have a little bit of a nice uh, base. Also, let's adjust the perspective. So if you hit the P key, you can turn the perspective off and on. So I'm gonna turn it on. I'm going to go to draw. I'm gonna be putting this at 85 instead. I'm just using the move brush and the smooth by holding up shift. Kind of adjust our body. It's going to be using the move topo topological. We kind of make the arms thinner. That's starting to look pretty nice. Natural. Mess a little bit more with the arms. That's starting to look like a pretty natural body to me. One thing you can see is that we see right through our model because we have a hole. It's very annoying, so we can go to display properties and we can put this on double. And again, I'm going to be using hotkey, so Ctrl Alt click and assign this to our hotkey. Now, when you press the hotkey, you can easily turn that off and on. Usually, I like to have this on. So um, I want to really quickly change some things about this match before we actually get started on working on the armor. That's getting rid of the face and filling this hole. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here. I'll take BHP to go to H Polish brush and hold down Alt. I'm going to be getting rid of the eye out a little bit. The notes. Let's see if we can do the same for the mouth, which we can. Then use the move. If I hold down Alt, I can inflate it into the normal direction, which sounds kind of complicated, but it's just pushing the, the topology forward. Also, going to be getting rid of the ears. And this is just to get a more basic looking human. Then on the bottom here, I don't like how it's not a nice clean edge. So I'm going to push this down a little bit. Now to fix this jacky edge with all the steps, we can mask this out. Control outside of the, the model on the canvas. Control click to invert. I'm going to control click on the border to smooth the mask out. Deformation, polish by features. You do want to make sure that you click this little ball so it's empty on the inside. So it smooths it out a bit better. Now we can just polish this out and see that we get a nice clean edge. Let's drag that mask out to clear it. Then the last thing that we need to do is so we hit Shift F to see our topology. I want to go ahead and fill up this hole. So if you remember, our fix menu, I'm gonna hit the hotkey. And over here we have close holes. Just gonna be pressing that. And now we have our fixed mesh. Of course, this looks very ugly, but we're gonna be fixing it up in a bit. First, let's focus a little bit on saving our work. So the way you want to save in ZBrush. It's very simple, we just go to Tool and click Save As. This will prompt up the Windows Explorer where we can put a location to save it. We can create a new folder called Armor. Then in this, I'm going to be creating a new folder called ZBrush. So in our project folder, which is going to be Armor, we generally want to create a few folders. 
that correspond to the software. But we're going to be talking about that later, about the folder structure. First, let's just focus on ZBrush. So in ZBrush, I'm going to create a new folder called ZTL. Because I do also want to have other folders where we can save other stuff. For example, if we use any custom brushes, or let's say we use any custom displacements, whatever. And then our CTL is going to go into this DTL. Then let's call this. Uh, now we have this save. One thing to note is that the first subtool is going to take over the name of the CTL. So if I rename this to body, and I go to save as armor, you're going to see it gets rid of the name. So to fix that, just going to add a spare, which the gizmo with my hotkey. Again, you can go to transform over here and set a hotkey. I'm going to be placing the sphere inside the body. I'm going to be clicking this to go to the center of the sphere. Let's make a tank sphere. Now you can see we cannot see the sphere because it's hidden in the body and very small. I'm going to be changing this to be the first subtool. So now if I rename this to body, I'm going to go to save as and save this as armor. I see our empty subtool takes on the name, while the body remains with the same name. So that's pretty practical. So I do also want to show you the way that I use the save. The plugin. Right on toolbox. So I have a plugin for saving stuff faster, which is super useful. I'm going to show you very quickly how to install it. So first off, the plugin you can get it over at my ArtStation store page. It's just a small amount to get it, you download it and then we can use it. But I am going to recommend you to go ahead and just download the complete plugin toolbox, which is going to be having all the plugins that I use in my workflow. These are all, work these are all plugins that I created to improve the workflow in ZBrush. And by getting the plugins, you also support the channel and the, all the free tutorials that are on here. So let's see really quickly how we can install this. So after you download it, you have to try on save manager zip. Unzip it. And open it up. You'll have a quick install guide which tells you how to install it. But it's super easy. All we have to do is go to ZBrush, open file location, and open file location. Now we can go to the Z startup, C plugin 64, and all that we have to do is take the file and drag and drop it into here. So now in ZBrush, make sure that you have saved, go on, also make sure that you go to config, store config, Preference and hotkeys and store this as well. So now we're going to need to restart ZBrush so it can load the new plugin file. Now that we have ZBrush started up, we go to load tool. I'm going to load our armor file. Now, con comma to clear the light box. I'm going to drag this out and hit to go into edit mode and control N to clear the cube. So now we have our model back. Let's put the basic material on here. Now if we go to this off to show you the Z plugin, we click that ball again, drag it to the side, drag on toolbox, and you'll see that you have a safe manager over here. So now we have a new button called save. I'm just going to click this and this is going to tell you file saved to disk successfully. So now the way this works, that's going to create a new file where we have our old file created. So 
That sounds a little bit complicated, but all it's doing, Seabrush is taking a look where the current CTL is saved. That's gonna create a new file with a new number in that location. That's why it's important that we remain with the same name all the time. Because if this name changes to, let's say, uh, to one, and then you save again, it doesn't know how to save it, because it needs to take a look at the name. And the first sub tool is also going to store some information about the location. So all that you need to know is never touch the first sub tool and don't mess with the name. So anytime that we hit save, you can see that's going to create a new save with a new number. And this is very useful and powerful to always have a new save. Because let's say at some point your ZBrush gets corrupted or you accidentally deleted something that you shouldn't have and you discover it a few days later, you can always go back. So now I'm just going to delete those. Actually, we can just keep them and let's keep working on our armor. I'm also going to put the save on our UI to access it very quickly. So again, enable customize. We can just control alt and drag this to somewhere. I'm just going to put it right there. Close this up. Enable the customize. So now anytime we want to save, we just click here. It's going to be super fast. So before we actually start working with the armor, we need to do one thing. Let's fix the topology. As you can see, this has a very strange bad look topology currently. First, I'm going to smooth that out a little bit over there. There's two ways of smoothing. Right now, if I smooth, this doesn't work. But if you smooth and then you release shift, it's gonna polish. So then you can kind of alternate between the two by holding our shift and releasing it. That's nice and smooth. Now let's zebra mesh this. So all that zebra mesh is, it's gonna take our topology and give us a new topology. We go zebra mesh. Let's put this to save, and for the rest we don't need to click anything. Now you can see it gives us a nice clean topology. Move that out a little bit more. Defamation, just polish it on a very low setting. And finally we're going to do one less zero mesh. Result here, so we're going to undo. Right, then adapt off and see what that does. Still not giving a better topology, so let's just keep this. At this point, we're officially ready to start working on the actual armor. Just hit save, and let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to mask out our clothes. That's pretty much going to be everything. So actually just control, drag everything, then go down, control, alt, and get rid of this. Get rid of the hands and the face. Now that we have this mask, we'll need to go ahead and create this into a sub -tool. So the way we do that is we go to sub tool, drag, change some settings, let's get rid of thickness, put this to zero, zero, and now extract. Then we need to go ahead and accept this. Now if we go into solo, this is gonna hide all the sub tools except for the current one. That's right there. Also, I'm going to put this to a hotkey. So, Ctrl Alt click. Put this to a key you like. I like to put mine to cap stock. Now we can quickly go here in and out. Ctrl drag. And again, I'm going to press my hotkey to unhide that. Hit instead of display properties double. 
Now you can see we have our topology for the vest, but you can see the topology is looking quite rough over here. So again, we're going to mask this out, just like we did with the body, invert, polishing type features. Fix that up, see the same over here. Up. Also going to inflate this a little bit with inflate brush. Now over here, I can get rid of some of this because I don't want that curvature. You can take select lasso. Let's select an edge loop. Then we want to go to poly groups. Outer group. Again, it's not working for some reason. Let's first just delete hidden and try that again. Now it's working. Now we go back to our select rectangle. Ctrl Shift Alt drag on the canvas to invert our hotkey and delete hidden. Now you can see by having this menu, speeding up our workflow quite a bit because we don't need to go here and look for it every single time. Now all that we need to do is pick this policy up a little bit, click on geometry, zero mesh, and let's put this to off. Zero mesh this. Rider. Then we can choose which one we like more. And I'm more fan of this topology. And the reason why, because we get a little bit of an ugly flow right there. Now over here we have our tub tool for the vest. Again, solo set to hotkey, so I want to unhide everything. W to bring up our transpose, hit our hold key to switch between the two. Now on the last ball, with the right mouse, I'm gonna drag, just to inflate the whole mesh. Now we have our vest set to setup. And let's fix that final intersection. So I do want to quickly talk about the Mammo plugin. So I do want to quickly talk about this plugin, the Quick Extract plugin. Just if we go back to ZBrush, I can show you what it does. So we just went through the process of creating that new subtool from our mask. But that's gonna take quite long to do every time. And this is something that you're gonna be using all the time to create new pieces. So I wanted to create a plugin to make this a lot faster. So if I go ahead and do the masking again. Now the only thing that we need to do is set some settings. I'm just gonna change the poly count, if that's it. Change this to something like 10. Now I'm gonna hit extract. So you can see what this is gonna do. It's gonna do everything automatically. And it's also gonna add some quick Thickness. You can see this topology is super low, so I'm going to hide the poly count a little bit. I'm going to delete. It's also super thick, so let's just thickness. I hit poly count to maybe 30. Now we extract. You can see this creating a very nice topology with some thickness very fast. Then the only thing that we need to do, inflate it a little bit. So you can see how it's a lot faster. So I'm gonna take the old one, delete it. So one thing that you might notice is this looks super smooth, even though we have a very low poly count. That's because we're using dynamic subdivisions. This is also what's giving thickness. So I wanna cover the dynamic subdivisions really quick as it's going to be a very important part of ZBrush. We go to Geometry, you can go to Dynamic Subdivision, you can see that we have a dynamic button. So if we turn this off and on, it's going to add some fake subdivisions. To demonstrate this point, 
Let's also get rid of the dynamic thickness. You can see how it's becoming more smooth. We don't add any subdivisions. So let's say if we divide this, Ctrl D to subdivide, we get the same result. I'm gonna hit Shift S to make a screenshot. You can see we have three subdivisions. So if we go back a little bit, dynamic, subdivisions to three. They are gonna look, we should be putting it to two actually, they're gonna look exactly the same. This is like a preview of your subdivisions, which is super useful for like you're blocking stuff out and designing and stuff. And especially the thickness is very nice to preview a thickness. 0 0.05. Too much. Let's put this to 3. And the last thing then we need to talk about is the post subdiv. So I always like to put this off and then we can control the segments that we get in the thickness. So we can either have a very sharp edge and a lot of segments or very smooth edge by having low segments. I think for something like clock two works pretty nice. Now we have a very nice preview. Remember, this is how our actual circle looks like. And then later once we're happy with everything, we can go ahead and apply that. And then we get the actual subdivisions and the thickness. But at this point, I still want to work very dynamically, so I don't want to apply that. Let's go ahead and fix our intersections with the move brush. Just like that. Also, uh, if you don't know, I'm doing this reference on the screen. It's a software called PureRef, which is very nice to view reference. I use it all the time. So let's start working on the metal pieces next. First, I'm going to take my extract, go preference, config, enable. I'm going to put this right to our save button. Very easy access. I'm going to select the body. I don't want to extract directly from the the shirt, as you can see, the topology is so low that we can create a very nice controlled mask. Instead, let's use body. Now, do something like that. Okay. Too much about how it looks. And then we're going to hit extract. Now you can see it's going to do everything automatically. Let's hit W, drag that out. And then right click on the final to inflate. So it's on top. Now we're just going to be starting to move this a little bit. You can shift to clean that up. Let's work a little bit on the topology. So one has some sharp corners right there. I like to work a lot in my Topology mode, I think it's Shift F, so we can see a little bit better what we can select. And something like that looks fine to me. If I go to solo, see we don't see the backs, I'm gonna hit the pop key that we created. Now let's do a quick zebra mesher. Because we're using zebra mesher all the time, let's go ahead and make a menu for that. So we go Enable Customize, Custom UI, Create New Menu. Let's call this Ren or Remesh, or whatever you need to call it. Let's click it, drag it to the side. Geometry, the Remesh. Let's start putting our zero items in there. I'm just gonna copy the whole menu. These are all pretty useful settings. Don't worry if you don't know what all the 
settings too, we're going to be speaking about them later. Just like that. So let's enable customize. Let's click our menu with Ctrl Alt. Put this to a hotkey from right to left arrow. So now anytime you press the left arrow, you can go ahead and zero mesh very fast. Get a nice apology over there. We'll be working a little bit more on everything. So let's go back over here. I start moving this down. By holding down the Alt and the H polish. Let's see, remesh this again. Same resolution. Maybe we can just Ctrl Shift, go to select less so, start deleting. And delete hidden. So you can see how fast it goes by switching through all the custom menus. Which is great because we do want to try to work as fast as we can. Now we've lowered the fast a little bit. Let me go ahead and give this some color. Because we're doing something that's gonna rely a lot on design, start working with colors as soon as possible. The way you work with colors in ZBrush is with poly paint. We can take color, drag this to the side, then we can start with some colors. I'm just gonna select this. Let's go with like a reddish muted color and fill the object. When you fill the object, make sure you're working with the RGB. Otherwise, you don't fill it with the color. And for our metal, let's fill it like that. Our body. Don't pay too much attention to it, so I'm going to fill it with that. Also, I want some dynamic subdivision so we don't see the polish. So I'm just going to hit D. That's going to be the hotkey to have dynamic subdivisions. The last thing I want to do is change the color of the background so the silhouette stands out a little bit more. You can go. Document. Then on back, we click and then we drag to white. Something like that. Now you can see, we can start to see the silhouette a little bit better. And lastly, I'm just going to add a new light, click this. It's going to create a new light, and then if we press again, it's going to create light from the back. Create a new light from the back and put this to a value of about 1. You can see how that makes it stand out a little bit more as well. Because we're going to be designing this thing pretty much from scratch, without following any reference. I want to have a little bit more flexibility about designing this piece. So instead of working with zero mesh with a clean topology, let's first go into Dynamesh. So I think this is also a great example to showcase when you use Dynamesh and when you use zero mesh. So if you're very clear about what you want to do, for example with the um, with the cloth here, this is pretty straightforward. You could be working more with zero mesh. And then if you want to go into some design parts, you go into Dynamesh. So actually, I'll probably go into Dynamesh at some point as well for the cloth, just a little bit to start designing where I want the seams to be, where it's being sewn together. But for now, let's worry about the design of the metal. Geometry. Also, this one you're going to be using quite a lot. So let's just go ahead and enable customize, custom UI, and create a new menu. Let's call this thing Dyn Dynamesh. We have been using ZBrush for a long time, but even I have trouble finding some stuff sometimes because I'm so used to just using my custom menus. 
dash. Dragging that. You don't need to drag everything, just drag the things that you use. Personally, I don't use anything in here except for the resolution and the dynamash. Let's go ahead and drag some extra buttons just to make that look a little bit more. And actually, the bigger one is quite useful. It's a more recent app. Keepers, I'm going to add that one as well. And let's keep this as our Dynamesh Mac. So again, like always, go ahead and go config. Enable Customize Turned Off. Take our menu and put a hot key. Just going to put a Y key. Now anytime you press it, we get this. So what Dynamesh is, it's going to take our mesh and it's going to remesh it. It's going to be faster and it's going to try to keep the mesh as evenly spaced as possible. So we're going to create a new save. And if we try it now, you can see it's going to give us a very, very bad result with a lot of mess. And the reason why is because we have dynamic thickness. So if we do Shift D to get rid of our dynamic settings, that's a shortcut, Shift D to go out and D to go in, you can see that we have a flat surface. The Dynamesh can't work with flat surfaces. Z Remesh you can, but Dynamesh not. So we're just gonna go ahead and apply our dynamic subdivisions. Let's actually go ahead and make the thickness a little bit bigger because it's going to be easier to design this. Just like that. And then let's hit apply. Now we have a little bit more freedom to actually design it. What I mean by that is we go to Dynamesh, we Dynamesh it. Delete the subdivisions first. Let's Dynamesh it. I can see it's very quick and giving us that topology. It's a little bit too low for me, so I'm gonna undo. Let's up the resolution. The resolution is basically how dense the mesh will be. So if we set it very low, it's gonna give us very big quads. And if we set it very high, it's gonna give us very tiny quads. I think about 400 will be a good amount. Now we can work a little bit on designing the armor. So the first thing that I want to do, probably make this a little bit bigger. Also I'm going to be hiding the reference, just to make sure that I'm not following it too much. Get me a little bit less of a creative result. So first off, I'm going to use the move and kind of follow the shape of the body. Take to that. PDS, the damn standard, we can put in some lines. So if we hold down Alt, we can push a line out. So for example, in the reference, we have this line here, which I quite like. You can go ahead and just hold down Alt. I'm going to hold down shift to get a straight line. We can drag that out. Now we have a line in our armor. I do really like putting lines into things. Also, I'm going to take C intensity. Put this to a hotkey, which I have mapped on my Wacom pen. Actually, I don't. Nice, so I can show you how that works. So if you're using a Wacom tablet, you can go to Wacom, go to the pen, you can go to the keyboard, keystroke, just put it to the key that you have assigned to the hotkey. Now anytime when I press that pen button, I can quickly change the intensity, because you're going to be messing with this a lot of time. Bigger, we need a little bit more resolution. 
to see if we just drag this out. Which changes, which didn't used to happen, so never mind. Back in the early days, you have to make a quick change, like a smooth and then drag it. To update it, by the way, don't drag the mask on the mesh, because it won't work. You need to drag it outside of the model to update it. Over here to push the line out and holding down Alt and then go underneath without holding down Alt to create kind of a layered effect. And everything that I'm doing, I'm going to be very unattached to as we're just trying to find a cool design. I'm going to go with a pretty big brush, try to do some effect on the borders. Also a brush that I use all the time is if you go to Lightbox, Brush, Smooth, Smooth Directional. This will smooth out what you have and directionality of what you have, which sounds very complicated, but basically if I smooth on this line, I'm going to try to keep that line. If I smooth against that line, it's going to smooth that line out. I need to play a bit with brush to kind of discover how it works, it's great. So I'm going to just up this a little bit. There isn't really uh, a right or wrong at this point. Don't worry too much about the design, just kind of try to get something that you like going on. It doesn't need to look too clean. You can see this as um, the sketching phase of a drawing. The sketch is going to be very rough, just like our dying mesh. And then later on, we're going to go ahead and refine that to make it nice. Thank you so much. I'm just trying some stuff and see how that looks. Also, I'm not going to be focusing too much on the design part in this tutorial. Because I do want to teach you more about uh, execution and how the workflow works in general. Again, I'm just using the damn standard. Great. So I want to try to go ahead and match this shape. Move. Up and this down. Directionality. Dying mesh to put the resolution even higher. You slowly want to build up that resolution. Just keep going higher when you need it. Resolution. Now I want to work a little bit on the layering. What we can do is we can start to mask this. But the move, we can move this and delete the other one. Invert the mask, kind of play with that. Yeah. So you can see I'm kind of starting to refine my design. And again, if I were doing like uh, an asset, I would spend quite some time on the design and doing some variations, looking what I like most. Now I'm just gonna go with the first thing that we do. Try to keep this tutorial as short and effective as we can. So with the H polish, we can go ahead and kind of clean our hard surface shapes up. Stuff gets like very Thin, it's not good. The line mesh, so we can go ahead and inflate that a little bit. Just redyne the mesh. And don't worry about it looking very rough, because again, think about this as a sketch. It's supposed to look very rough. And later, I'm going to show you how to clean this up with the zebra mesh. 
Na lass den Hund mit Kuschen das. Very big important part about designing is how the silhouette reads. Right now, if we take a look from the side, I think it's kind of a boring silhouette. So I do want to go ahead and try to make this look a little bit more interesting. Out of these thingies. So something like that looks a little bit more interesting. I do think the angle is very harsh, but the angle I mean here. This is the angle, which is almost 90 degrees, but I don't really like. So we can take the H polish brush, then hold down Alt, and we can start to smooth that angle out by just blending it. Let's smooth direction again. I'm going to be going left to right to smooth that out. You can see we have a nice uh, transition. I'm just going to be doing that for all the pieces. Just creating circular motions. Go like this with holding down Alt to very effectively and fast clean that up. I'm trying to clean this up a little bit by moving this and smoothing it. Now the last thing that I want to do is push those lines in to be a little bit more pronounced. This and so I want to put them everywhere. And the cool thing about uh, modeling something like this, it's a very hard surface. Instead of doing it in Maya and doing it with poly modeling or whatever, by doing it inside ZBrush, we just focused on the design part mostly. Keep that one. Soft. By focusing on the design, I think we can get much cooler looking armors. Again, we're going to be using that circular motion with the H polish. Clean that all up. And sometimes I'm holding down Alt, sometimes I'm releasing it. Just to treat the surface more evenly. Because when you hold down Alt, it's going to push the surface out. When you don't hold down Alt, it's going to push the surface in. So by combining the two, we can very quickly get a nice, clean, even surface. And just like that, we have a pretty interesting looking armor. Now let's focus a little bit on the bed. I'm going to be pretty fast. I'm just going to take the sub tool. I'm going to Duplicate. Take transport, disable symmetry, hit R to rotate, R and S rotate. Then by holding up shift, we can snap the angle. I'm just gonna flip it. Now this is gonna look a little bit funny. We're gonna go ahead and start just gonna get to work for the back. I think like this obviously doesn't work. I'm having it the same, looks very weird and rounded. Let's go ahead and start adjusting, trying to come up with something that we do like for the bed. Maybe just out. By reusing the front piece and changing it like this, we can very quickly work. You always want to try to reuse pieces. You see it's also not symmetrical, so I'm gonna mirror and weld. I'm gonna delete that part, so I can just control shift alt, delete it, back to delete hidden, so we hide it and dynash. That's gonna fill it up. So whenever you have something happening like this, it means that the surface is too thin because it's interacting. Quickly fix that, just take the inflate brush and inflate that area out from the finish. I'm not going to be worried too much about the back. I'm just going to put a shape here that I like. We pretty much call it done. I'm 
we're going to try to follow the natural curvature at the back. And the machine is a mess again. I'm just going to take the whole piece and flip it a bit. I do kind of like the angle there to follow the design of this over here. Let's make sure that it looks normal from the front view. I'm gonna go ahead and draw and put this to 85 again. Go ahead and work a little bit on the vest. So the first obvious thing is that I want to make this a little bit longer. Mask, invert, control to smooth that out, and drag this down. That. Now we move, move this out a bit. Let's move topology so we can modify the waist without really adjusting the arms. The way this works, it takes the topology in count and it won't move anything that's too far. So if we go to the normal move, you see that's moving the arms a lot. But the topology tries to ignore it. It just moves the topology around the selected vertex in the brush range. And then everything that's in our brush range is going to be affected. That's around the topology. With the normal brush, with the normal move brush, take it like this. It's not going to respect. The topology, since this over here is in the brush range, it's gonna move that as well. Let's go ahead and do the uh, zero mesh, same to even up that topology. I'm not too sure yet what kind of fuel I want for this armor. All that I know is that I'm just going to be creating a render like this, so I don't care too much about the lower body, but I do want to give it a little bit of attention. Check out proportions more or less. Maybe we'll just go with like a kind of dress type. Again, I don't care too much about this because the final renders are going to be like I don't like how much we can see the back armor from the front. Let's adjust this a little bit. Well, this as well to make sure it's symmetrical. Gonna help give it some detail, visual breakup, border of the mesh. Like that it looks quite nice. See what happens if we split this up. So don't be afraid to try things, and if they don't work out, you now let's go back. Now let's focus a little bit on the connection of these two armor plates to keep them together. So let's go ahead and work a little bit on the connection between these two pieces. And if we zoom in, you can see that's done by a leather strap. And just for the sake of ease, because I want to keep this material as short as possible. I'm going to do a connection without a buckle. Just please take the time to model.
So we can just mask like that our armor piece. Then we can go ahead and use our extract button. Again, if you don't want to get the plugin, you can just go to the to the menus here and do the extraction manually. Let's go ahead and put some color on this. That it's also preference enable customize. I'm gonna change my layout a little bit. I'd like to put that over here. It's the alpha and that one and that one. I'm gonna be here. Also gonna go ahead to color, take the fill object, put that right here. Also, because we're going to be using dynamic subdivisions quite a lot, let's go ahead and make a menu for that. Customize, menu, create new, .ps for dynamic subdivision. I don't use the micro poly that often. No one put it. One thing that I do want to put over here is uh, subtool, geometry, and the trees. Because creases go hand in hand with dynamic subdivisions. It's nice to just put it over there. I'm going to be taking a look later on how uh, the creases work. And put this to Control Alt D. Click Control Shift D. Well, that's not something that I actually use. So it's make used to make copies. The tools. Okay. Here now, the subdivision off. It's a little bit with the settings. All that to be done. Now, for here, we're not going to be using Dynamesh for this piece because we know exactly what we want to make. So, we can just skip that and work with a clean topology. Again, let's do something like this because it's faster. One thing that's important, so we keep a very close eye on the topology. So as you can see, this looks quite messy. So I'm going to go ahead and half. I'm going to be easy remeshing this until we have a nice low topology. Then this doesn't look very nice. So we're going to hide that. The same here and delete hidden. Now we have a nice clean poly strip. So you can see we have a lot of bending and it's not very straight. And we're going to be using the polish again. The polish we're going to be using all the time. So let's make a menu. Polish in here, polish by features. One of the others I don't really use. Now we can just mask the ends. Put that out. Polish that feature. Not smooth that out actually. Let's polish that features. Now you can see it's starting to become very nice and clean. So I do think it's a little bit too thin. 
we can either start to try to manually make this bigger, but it's going to be very annoying to do. A better way of doing this is go to our custom menu, just hit polish. So that's going to thin it out. Then we can go to replay last and we can invert it. By doing that, we're effectively making the strap thicker. We have a lot of control. And sometimes you do need to do a little bit of make cleanup, of course, because we didn't start off with the exact same thickness. Let's go ahead and polish that all out again a little bit. Now we have our first connections. Go ahead and repeat that over here to connect those pieces up. Go ahead and try to hide your arms so you can see what we're doing. So with the select lasso and control shift clicking poly loop to hide it. But now what we can do is we can go to visibility. I'm going to put grow and shrink to hotkeys. Put this to control left arrow key and this one to control right arrow key. Now we can throw that visibility out. Let's do it like that. We're going to do poly groups. Out of it. Control W to make the all one group, invert the selection, uh, the, the visibility by Control Shift Alt and drag outside of your mesh. And control W to poly group that. Make sure that you get two different colors. Now, anytime we want to hide the part, we can Control Shift click that poly group with the select rectangle to hide it. Do the same for the arms. Loop. That one. Now I'm going to try to grow it out. Like that is pretty nice. Let's make that. Control W. Control W. And making sure that I have different colors. I'm sorry for the audio. They got a little bit messed up in the last 10 minutes. But should be fine from this point on. Let's work on the side connection. Probably just separate this out into two different pieces. Try to space those out a little bit more evenly. And again, I'm adding some more detail to the edges. The borders. Now we can just go ahead and take this subtool and we can duplicate it. Get started to move it out to the side. Maybe I do want to make this a little bit closer. Okay. So let's get rid of this. We don't really use it. Just going to be doing this for every piece that we have over here. Now you can see we don't really have a nice distance between the pieces. What I mean by that? That the length that it's from the border over here is even, but for example here it's starting to penetrate it. 
can see here we have this much space, here we have this much space, this much space, and this much space. This should all be even with space to get a nice design. If I fix this up a little bit, I'm gonna be very fast about it. And then later on, we worry a bit more about it. So you can see by adding more elements, you're always be doing some small tweaks to the design. So it's good to kind of try to block all the elements out at the same time. Like don't refine the metal too much before you have everything in there. Yeah, we'll create a little bit more space for that. So we need to move that up. Then we can move this one up. Next up, let's focus a little bit on the cloth. So we've been ignoring that for a while. So let's unhide everything. We're gonna take our reference back. But first, let's actually make a dynamesh. Let's also unhide everything over here. Fill that up. Don't apply. Let's do a dynamesh. We should quite high because we should be deleting the lower. Actually, let's not do a dyne mesh because I don't want this to merge, which is annoying. So let's just do an extra subdivision and start to block out in this. So the first thing that I want to figure out is where I want my seams to be. Seems is parts where it's being sewn together. Here. Another one right here. Then we have them on the side. Of course, for the arms, we also need to have them. I'm being very, very sloppy with this. Later we'll define that a little bit better. Let's make this a little bit less tight. Let's reconstruct subdivisions so we can easily move it on the lower subdivision. This video is mostly going to be focusing about the metal part, not too much about the cloth part. So that's going to be a little bit faster the way I go through it. So on work a little bit, I'm going to delete lower, check if we have symmetry, so we add. So I'm going to work a little bit on how the shoulders are looking. I'm not the biggest fan right now. Try to create a nice uh, look. Okay. Even based on the cloth, I'll make small adjustments to the armor. Do some really, really quick folds. So super easy way to add some quick folds is to mask this out. Pointed towards the directionality that you want folds. Let me go to T for transpose. And put this to the transpose cloth. Then we switch to the other gizmo and just make that smaller. Now we go to the normal gizmo again. Then we can scale this out again. Now you can see we made some really quick folds. It shouldn't be like, let's say, a final fault or whatever. It's a very nice, quick way to get something going. Especially for us, because we're not going to be caring too much about faults. So I want to try to keep this as short as possible. Let's do a little bit of fault theory. So generally, when you're doing uh, characters for video games, 
You want to make sure that the folds are going to be working in the most positions possible. With that, I mean, imagine that your character is running. Right now we have the arms like this. It's running, it's moving the arms, then the arms might go like that and like that. Maybe they go all the way straight or up. So we need to see how the folds will look the best possible for most positions. Complicated, but the main guideline they should be following is Gold should be going more like that, this way. So, in fact, a bad example for a fold would be a fold like this. Because it's not going to look natural in most positions. Not a bad one, in my opinion, would be kind of more like that. I'm going to try to make it go more like this. But this can look the most natural in most positions. Here, point it towards there. Just like that. Doing some very, very quick rough folds. We start to connect those folds up. A big part of having folds look nicely is how the folds come together with each other. The way how folds end. We want to be really careful of those areas. Be making sure that you push the surface in and out. So not only outwards, because that's going to make the folds look fake. And of course, the reference is very important as well. For the sake of speed, I'm just going to be putting some very rough looking folds in here. Pay a lot of attention to the silhouette. And the folds kind of build up all around this area. She'll have a lot of compression there going on. Another quick tip for folds, they kind of make pattern diamonds. Like that. And that goes inwards over here. Of course you want to be careful that you don't repeat that pattern too much, that's going to look very fake. Yeah, the elbow, in, in the elbow, I'm not quite sure how to call that. We have a lot of compression happening. Here we can start to make longer folds. Now over here, let's go ahead and do some very large folds like that. following, falling down. But again, I'm going to be skipping very fast over the plot because I want to focus on the metal for this theory. Then the final render, I'll probably have the body there as well, but as uh, like a great out tool. So I do want to make sure that the silhouette, silhouette reads a little bit better. I don't want to spend too much time on it. I'm just going to create a mask and inflate the hands a bit. So like that. I'm getting at a pretty nice stage. Probably want to do some extra armor because I think right now it's looking pretty boring. This out, let's clear the mess so we don't have anything else. 
triangle shape. I'm doing a triangle shape, you can follow the design of that. Let's see if that works. Some extract. Inflate this to push it out. Let's fill it up with that color. Also forgot to fill those. Also, another thing to make your ZBrush look a little bit nicer, you can enable customize. You want to go to render, preview AO. Let's drag this onto the UI. Now, if we press this, you get some ambient occlusion. Depending on your computer, you need to set uh, the quality lower or higher. I like to keep it at 6, but if your computer can handle it, you can push it up to 10. And then you want to have this to be pretty subtle, so maybe a value of 12. You can see that adds a little bit of depth to the sculpt. Look a little bit more nicely. So you can see we have double extraction. And actually, let's go ahead and create a menu for the polygroups because we're going back and back to it. This kind of the mentality of creating menus. Keep yourself finding, going back and back to this site, you should be creating a custom menu for it to save some time. Because every time going here and looking for the things, it doesn't seem like a lot of work, but if you're working on a character, which takes like a few weeks of doing the high poly, all those little things of looking is going to Gonna eat up your time. And of course, just put the ones that you use all the time. Now we can just auto group really fast, delete, error, and weld. And you can see with those three menus that we created is going very very fast which that was turned off by default key polypane but i'm happy that he added it because it didn't used to be there it was super annoying Also, I'm not necessarily going for the most realistic armor, you'll probably never see a long plate like this. But just kind of want to go for a more fantasy feel. I do want to be careful that uh, I'm going to keep it somewhat functional. But right now, if he's going to bend the knees, it's going to be strange, right? So I'll work about that later. First, I like to focus on the design part, and then start thinking about uh, the functionality while we're creating. Both get rid of the annoying sections that keep happening. Fix it. Create some space to get some break up in the color there. And if we put it like this, it's not going to be very nice because we have a continuous block of white. By doing that, we get some break up in the color. I think like this could be pretty nice. I'm going to apply it. Now I'm going to design it a little bit more. So let's do a damage. Because we need to go ahead and delete those subdivisions and damage. Probably can't follow that. We're gonna make it a little bit more coherent. What we have over there. The bigger brush, push the silhouette out more. Yeah, that would look a kind of bit finer. Probably do something like that. I like the break in the middle. And then to make that line make sense, we're gonna take the mask lasso. Drag that out like that. Transpose tool in W. 
position the well and start rotating that. That makes a little bit more sense. So it's going to be a little bit more functional, protecting the legs, which is good. Now let's make this piece a little bit functional. I'm going to add a little bit of detail to the edge, like that. Really happy with the way that looked. Try it, it looks a bit better. Find that a little bit better. You can see how we're slowly but surely building up the speed. Then we have these little spikes here, which look kind of odd, but I do think it could be a cool element to make it more fantasy like. So we're going to see what happens if we put this in the main piece. You can see this is pretty fun to, to do. We're not really working with a reference, just kind of coming up with what we think looks cool using our visual library. Memory. I do also got to add that I'm not the best at designing yet. So I've kind of got into it more recently, but I've been really enjoying it because I'm very used, used and uh, comfortable working from concept because that's what I've been doing for years. I do think it's more fun to, to actually come up with something itself. I'm really enjoying design arms. That's why I'm also doing this video. Now let's work a little bit on the functionality of this. So first let's create some layers now that we have a bit folder. Uh, now first let's create some folders now that we're a bit further. So let's call this straps. Little pieces into here. So we take any strap that we want, duplicate it. Start making this piece functional. And at this point we're still at the blockout stage in the design, but everything's still looking very rough, but don't worry. When we have everything designed, all the elements, I'm gonna go ahead and clean that all up. I'm gonna show you exactly how we can take a very rough Dynamesh design blockout to a very clean polished high poly and probably just see which I might do some quick tricks in Maya, but I'm not, I'm not sure yet. Those will be very fast and easy things that you can do in any software. But I'll try to keep it all in. So you can see we can literally just duplicate with the move, start placing that in place, which is going to be very fast. Get an ugly dip like this. With the dip, I mean this volume is going like that, which isn't very nice. All that you need to do is take the H polish, hold on Alt, push that volume up again to be nice and clean. And clean it up, so mask the middle, invert and polish by features to make it a little bit clean. Now you can see I'm changing design, the design of the, the plate based on the needs of the, the strap there. Again, that's why it's important that we try to block everything out kind of together. I'm moving this down because I'm trying to create a nice line. With that, I mean a nice continuous 
lines the eyes to follow like that. We have it like this, like this, and then it gets very close to the armor and it's not following the curvature of the armor. That's the reason behind that change. Now to make this look a little bit more functional, I'm going to try to create a hole here so you can actually bend his knees. It's been a while. As you can see it's quite nice. We're just getting saved every time and every time. Very fast. If I remember how. Okay, so control shift spacebar and then do brush radius. Smaller. Alt to invert little hole there. Then we get outer group. Okay, well that. Do we need a mirror over here? So let's take this menu, enable customize, and let's add some stuff for deformation. Mirror all the way up top. Unify and smart resim. Again, every time you need something, you can just add it to a menu. Mirror and the right weld. Outer groups. Weld again to make that symmetrical. So now we have four groups, but I want the groups to be identical. Actually, we're going to add a little bit more. We add group split. And split hidden. We're using this all the time. The others I don't really care about too much. Now we can do group split. It's going to split our polygroups to different meshes. Let's move this one a little bit more down. Face to move and then the knees. So we've got to be honest, I'm not 100% sure where those knees are, so I'm going to take the body. I don't think I can go back for another time. Nope. What you can do is you can just take the project with the body from and copy and paste that. Save. Because this is going to open up the project. Save this as. SVTL. Go here, call this zero body. Come on, it's zero, so it will be top. O to also change our background color again. Just pick a white from here. Also another cool thing. Also another cool thing. If at some point you don't really like how everything is looking, so you can mess a little bit of course with the lights. Let's add the backlight again. Just into working for some reason. Okay, let's ignore that for now. That's how we have the room. Material should be washed with the basic material. Just intensify light a bit, something like this. 
Now, if you want to further customize how the viewport looks, we can go to render. We can go to adjustment. We can mess a little bit more with stuff. It's pretty cool. I like to sometimes touch it up when I'm tired of how stuff look. Usually I mess with contrast, brightness and gamma. Brightness up a little bit. The gamma down a little bit. Then you can also go ahead and mess with curves. Just like in Photoshop, I can use curves to change how the image looks. You can do the same in the ZBrush viewport. Then you can turn it off and on to kind of see the difference. This can usually get you something that looks just a little bit better. I wanted to share that because I have been working with ZBrush for over five years and I never knew that was an option. Well, it's a pretty cool function. Get our body, let's copy, paste. Really on with the proportions. A little bit around. I think make sure it's all can bend right. Probably render at most something like this. So I don't really care about how anything down here looks. I do want to care a little bit about this beginning piece. It's also a, a great thing if you want to save some time. Think about the, the renders, what you're going to be making. And spend most time on the parts that you'll actually focus on and see in the renders. For example, when I get to the detailing stage. I won't have to detail all that because we're never going to see it. So I'm still kind of trying to think about uh, the character itself, about the armor, who is wearing the armor. I'm getting to kind of a vampire gothic feel, especially with the red, and the long clothes. Once you can decide on the story, you can try to add some storytelling as well. For example, if this like some ancient vampire, we can add a lot of weight uh, to the armor. So he's been fighting a lot of battles. Even that out, so it's more or less the same size everywhere. Maybe we can point this, so we can follow the design over here with the points. Try to reinforce those shapes. So okay, I'm kind of looking at how much distance we have there, and I'm going to try to match that. So again, let's work on that connection. Let's duplicate that. Let's move it all the way down with the move brush with a very big type. And again, if I had more time, I would probably like design some kind of buckle for this. So the connection makes a little bit more sense. And so I want to try to focus on the important parts. Just be using a strap and all that bolts. Also, if you're following along this tutorial, you I should probably have said this more in the beginning. Feel free to like do your own design of the armor. If you are more experienced in ZBrush, I would definitely recommend to follow along with your own armor instead of just copying what I'm doing. But if you're newer, I would recommend to just kind of copy what I'm doing or something similar. 
So you don't need to worry too much about the design part. Just focus more on the execution and the, the workflow. That is going to be more easy. Also, when we get to the, the retopology stage. And the retopology stage is the stage where we take the high poly, our zebra sculpt, and we prepare a low version of that mesh. So we can put it into a game. A really high in shape of the skirt, I think it should be a little bit. I'm going to clean this up a little bit more. And let's go get started at separating the cloth into different subtools. So wherever we have some, um, some areas like this, it's going to be super, super difficult to retopologize if we don't go ahead and separate this piece out, because this is going to be pretty much impossible. So the ID. So the ID is when we get to the retopology stage. So when we get to the retopology stage, we'll have two different high polys to retopologize. One is gonna be the sleeve, some amazing drawing skills. Oop. Not the best drawing, and the other one is going to be the main part, the torso. So then we can hide one element, so we can actually retopologize what's underneath here. And then we can also retopologize what's underneath here. The one more important step is when we're going to bake this down, we need to make sure that we can split it off so that we won't get a bunch of projection errors right here in the sleeves. Which sounds pretty complicated to all do, but you'll see it's a pretty easy, straightforward process. And another way to avoid this is to spread the arms out. More like this, but I don't really like modeling in a position like that, because it's a very unnatural looking pose. And I like to work with a nice natural both. By the way, if nothing that I just said made sense to you about baking and all that, don't worry, I'm gonna explain the whole workflow all the way from the beginning when we finish up the, the high poly. It's gonna be pretty easy to follow along. Let's go ahead and define the stitch line a little bit better and do an extra subdivision. Really start carving this in. Also, this will probably be easy with lazy mouse. So let's go ahead and add it to our UI. So you want to go into stroke, lazy mouse, and let's put the switch right here. And let's also put the radius here. And the other settings you won't ever really need to touch. These are the two only important ones. With the lazy mouse, it's very easy to drag a very nice clean line. I'm gonna start hiding the body a bit. You can mess a little bit with the proportions of the shoulders. I think like that looks pretty good. So the way we can easily separate these pieces out, just draw out the transpose line, subdivision down. Start off with mask like that. Start 
taking away a little bit from that mask. Adding to it. Now one important part is that uh, this is never going to be a perfect extraction. We're going to lose a little bit of work on the sleeves most likely. That shouldn't be too much of an issue to fix up. I'm going to control W to make the tall polygroups and kind of check how that's looking. Not looking too bad. Now I'm just going to extract this mask. The first thing that I want to make sure is that I don't extract any thickness. I'm going to hide everything except for this polygroup, which is the first polygroup, as you can see, which is like that. Now let's go ahead and extract. I'm going to hide everything. I'm going to do a slight inflate by right mouse clicking on the move. So again, that is, let's say we go here, B, D, and then transpose to R, drag it out, and right mouse click and drag the last bar to inflate. Now let's put this on top of our cloth. So I do want to make sure that this topology is going to be super clean because this is going to be our final topology for the high poly. Very useful brush is the smooth direction brush. I'm going to start using that one. So we can either go all the way here and then go to smooth, smooth directional. Then we can very nicely clean that topology up like that. But that's very annoying to do every time because you're probably going to be using this brush every single session. So we can just load it into ZBrush another way. So first I'm going to go ahead and reset all my brushes. So now if I go to try to use the smooth direction, you can see it's no longer here. So what we need to do, is locate your Z startup folder. Then that should be over here somewhere. Actually, let's go one back. So we go to the Z brushes. And these are going to be all the brushes that you just saw in your light box. Take a look at the folder names. They will match up with what you see in the Windows Explorer. So now we can go to the smooth one. Take smooth directional and the smooth stronger is pretty nice as well. So I'm just going to copy them. The startup, go to brush presets and now we paste them in here. So now if we try to use them, you'll see they're still not there because we need to go ahead and reset all the brushes. Now if we go to the smooth. You can see we have the smooth directional and the smooth stronger in here. Now anytime that you open up ZBrush, it's going to have those brushes loaded, which is going to be very easy and nice to have. So again, this is not a great topology. It's a little bit hard to explain exactly why this isn't a great topology. But what we're kind of looking for is nice Looks going like that, and then looks going like this. And then over here we can get a star like that. Don't worry too much about what a star is. If you don't know, we'll get to it in the retopology stage. This tutorial. We're looking for a nice flow like this, more or less. So if we take a look here. Over here it's not flowing very nicely. This is something that have, uh, that you get used to by time by seeing what is a nice flow and what isn't a nice flow. So I'm going to try it, Let's put this to the same and see remesh. Try a few times. This one's a bit better. I still don't really like it. I think it's quite low here, super dense, pretty dense there. 
Let's try a double. Now this is a nice even topology. The flow is pretty good as well, except for this part. Let's see if we put this in half. If it still keeps nice and even, which doesn't really do. So let's go with this one for our first subdivision. But do, I do still want to keep that flow better. Let's just put it the same. Start zebra meshing a few times. See if we can try to get something nice. Which we don't. Which is annoying. So one thing that we can try, go to geometry, edge loop, just put group loop on there, that's going to force the loop around it, but then it's still not the best connection. But now we can try to keep root, smooth groups, let's put that at one, and see where mesh and see what that does. So now you can see that it's giving us those nice loops. So I'm gonna retry it a few times. Let's take a quick look at which one I prefer. I prefer this one. And the reason why I prefer this one, if we take a look at the quads over here, they're very nice and evenly sized. If we take a look at this one, they're a little bit more rectangular. That's the reason why. Yeah, this is probably going to be the one that I like the most. So this area still doesn't look great. Okay, let's go with this density. Let's put it at the same. And let's just get rid of that loop. Because now it kind of has to flow anyway. And we'll do a better job remeshing. And I know this seems like a lot of work to, to try to get something that doesn't really matter, which you might think, because ZBrush, uh, you don't need a nice clean topology, so some people might think. But it's better to have a nice clean topology, so you're not fighting your topology when, when you're sculpting. Want the topology to be working with you rather than against you. Another thing that we can do is we can mask this out, do the polish, polish back features with this little ball empty in the middle, and that will smooth out the topology. Now that we have pretty nice looking topology. I want to get to work on getting our details back. So let's do a project. It's not doing a great job. So what we need to do is we go to Subtool, Project, and let's adjust the distance. We can easily access it. I also want colors, so let's turn that one on. If we up the distance. See now it's doing a much better job. Still messing up some areas, but I'm fine with that. We just put masking. And I'm gonna put this one over here because we do use it quite a lot. Mask by features. Now if we invert it by clicking on the canvas with the control, with the control holding down while holding down control. Now we hold control and click on the board of the mask. It will smooth it out. Now we can polish those features to make it nice and clean again. Polish this up a little bit further as well. Just like that. Hope 
that the symmetry got messed up, so I'm just going to mirror and weld it. A little error over there. Fix that, let's disable symmetry. Make sure to move this a little bit to the side, and now when we mirror and weld, that will be fixed. So at this point, don't think too much about a sculpting workflow, but more about a modeling workflow. We're not working with a lot of polys and using all the brushes. We're mostly just trying to get a very nice clean topology. As you can see here, this is pulling quite a lot. So I'm gonna try to get that to look nice and clean instead. That looks pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and move this by hand a little bit. Also remove some of this topology. The little hole that we had. We'll probably need to do another remesh if it fixed up this topology. First we mask it, then we polish the features to get it nice and rounded. I think that's quite a nice looking topology. The only thing I don't necessarily like is how we're getting this unstraight topology. How it's pulling up like that. So ideally it should be going straight like this flow. So one thing that we can try, I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but it's worth a try. Can you see remesh your guides? First, let's just, I'm clicking with my pen, and then I'm holding down shift, so it will snap to the ends. Wherever we have a curve, it's gonna try to keep a loop. Enable lazy mouse so we can drag it out a little bit straighter. And tell ZBrush, try to keep this as straight as possible. Don't expect too much from this because a lot of times it doesn't really work too well. Can be worth to try. Just putting in some flow how I would ideally like it to go. Ideally, it should be flowing. But Let's go ahead and take a look what it will do. You can see that's actually doing a very good job. The flow is a lot more straight than what we had before, as you can see. Again, flow. Now I'm repeating myself, but it's very important. It's going like this, which isn't great. But what we want is what we got after the curse that it goes straight like that. The only problem that we have right now, I would say, is that it's kind of destroying the hole that we were doing. So what we can try is we can put another curve around it. See if it can put a little bit more density right there. So it might try to reinforce another loop. But let's see, so we don't need to keep groups on. You see, it's putting a lot more density right there. It's not exactly the flow that I'm looking for. Maybe we can help ZBrush out and define our flow a little bit more. So something like that would be ideal. I think that's pretty much the best which we're gonna get, which isn't bad. 
I don't like how it's not looping around there. I think the rest is looking very nice. Just smoothing that out to even out what? Actually, it's not bad now that I think about it. Yeah, I'll probably also want to like make a fold with some buttons or something, which we didn't put in the block out. So this is ideal for this. So what we can do is we can get rid of one loop like that, which doesn't really work. First, let's hide that. Then we can get rid of one loop. Delete, but that's going to delete a lot. So first, let's take our Z modeler and insert new loop. Now what we can do is we can hide that loop. Then we delete hidden. Now we have a little bit of an ugly topology that we need to fix up. So we can just go like this. We can do stitch. Click on the first point and then on the next point. Then we go ahead and delete the triangulation. Because we don't want to be working with triangles in ZBrush. Now we have a very nice clean looking mesh. I think that's far enough for now for the torso. We only need to work a little bit on the arms. But pretty much going to be the same workflow. Gonna hit everything. Using the transpose line again. A little bit more. It's better to unmask a little bit too much like this than a little bit too little like that. I think something like that is good, so I'm going to invert that again. Then we go to the select rectangle to get the front polygroup. Invert that. Do a control W, you can get that one, kind of preview how it looks. I think we definitely can add a little bit from that. So this one's going to be a little bit more challenging. So we cannot really get the most perfect topology yet, because we haven't really decided on the folds directionality yet. So we're going to keep it pretty nice and basic. Outer groups to get rid of that little ball thing. So let's do it hidden and mirror and weld. Since we haven't really decided on a nice flow for the folds, I don't want to have the folds in the topology. Right now we have a lot of directionality from the folds affecting the topology, which isn't great. So what we ideally want is something like this, where it's very nice straight and even. Let's go ahead and try to get that. First I'm going to mask the features, move that out a little bit and polish. Now let's do a half. That's looking pretty good right out of the box. I'm just going to do a little bit of smooth direction. Take a look at this topology. One thing that we want to try is to keep the density the same. What that means is we take a render, shift R, say render. What should be more or less the same size mode objects, which it is right now, so that is good. Now let's go ahead and add some dynamic thickness. Segments at the one. Then instead of uh, like instead of having segments to keep that edge, I'm going to be using a crease. 
Chris on one eighty, and I put the Chris level down to two. Which be sign. Let's turn both of this off. And let's look at some subdivisions. And finally, let's put the offset at minus 100. Put the thickness down a little bit. And then we want to copy these settings to the other one as well. We do have a plugin for this as well on ArtStation, so you can just click copy and paste, which is going to be very nice and easy to use. I haven't gotten around to installing it yet. I'm just gonna do it by hand. I think it's a little bit too thick, so let's put the thickness down. Let's go ahead and make sure the shirt is going over the arms is how it would be in real life if this was yeah. This can be a little bit hard to see, so one thing that you can do is you can hide it like that. Then we can mess a little bit with it from the inside. It's gonna be a lot easier to, to land. You want to think about shape, what the armhole should be making. And then match our sleeve with that. That not perfect yet. Okay. A little bit more on this later on. Also, go ahead, break some of that symmetry. Like buttons together, that's going to be up until about there. Then start separating again over here. And at the top, it will be separated as well. So I don't want to delete this just yet, because maybe I do still want to reference the folds while we did. I'm just going to create a new folder for now and call this lockout. There, take the comma, start filling our clean mesh with that comma. Let's start getting our arm. It's penetrating a little bit, so we need to decide if we want to push out the armor a bit cloth. We're almost gonna start refining the armor, just like we did with the cloth. A few final adjustments still. I'm just going to be making sure that all the straps work. I think now we can easily just hide the arms. Start really digging into here. Probably if I were doing this on my own, I'd do something more interesting with uh, the armor piece. I could start adding some cool ornaments or whatever, just to get some detail in there. For this video, I'll probably just keep it very simple so we can go through it a little bit faster. And 
again, this is quite a, a basic looking armor. We don't have any interesting stuff. Some shoulder pads or whatever. Gauntlets, but that's all stuff that you can add on your own. It's gonna be following the same workflow. But if I were to go ahead and add it, it would make the tutorial way longer without really adding anything to it. So I'm gonna train myself in doing so. We're just gonna go with this for our final piece. Also, this definitely needs some stuff happening at the back because right now it looks fairly boring. But again, just want to demonstrate the workflow. Not necessarily come up with the best looking design. But I think we're at a good point where I'm pretty much liking all the shapes and the volumes. So let's go ahead and start cleaning this up. And the way we clean this up, it's going to be very easy. Also, when you're masking, right now I'm masking on the back side as well. If I mask here, you can see it's popping through, which is very annoying. So what we can do is we can go to brush. Did it uh, auto masking? And let's put back face mask on the UI because we're going to be turning that off and on all the time. So let's turn that on. Now with a very big brush holding down Alt, I'm going to clear all the masking right there. Which also killed the front because we turned it off for the move. But we need to turn it on for the masking. So we need to hold down Control. Now when we do it, you can see that the front remains intact. This is going to require a little bit of tweaking work on the plugin side. Go to the plugin, the plugin of preference. Go to quick extract. I'm going to make sure that we set these settings to something that will work nicely for our armor plate because we have a lot to do. That's also why I really recommend getting the plugin because it's going to be way faster to extract so many pieces. Let's start it off with an extraction. I think this is definitely a little bit too high in the poly count. Let's try something like 18. A little bit better, but it's smoothing out our corners quite a lot. Beat this as well. Smooth border way down to something like 20. I'm going to put the zero mesh times down to 1. Segments down. Actually, let's put that. Yeah, let's keep that to 1. Let's put subdivisions at 3. Let's give that another try. Maybe put this at 15 instead. Definitely not liking this result more. Delete. Back to 2. Wait, 60 again. Let's give it another shot. Getting some. Here that I don't like. Try again. This is looking like a pretty decent result. The only thing I don't like again is the density, so I'm going to put that down to 10. I think this will be our final settings. That's definitely looking pretty nice. So the first thing we need to do is add a crease. Actually, since we're going to be remeshing this all the time, it's not work with creases, but with segments. So let's put segments, let's increase. Let's put segments to four. Let's take a white 
open like that. So now that we set the correct settings, we don't need to worry about that anymore. For example, if I go right here, masking this piece out. Extract, we should get something pretty nice straight away. Let's go ahead and fix this up a little bit. We need to start matching it to our block out. Pretty much the first thing that you need to do after you zero mesh is to make the corners very straight again. Straight to where they should be. Smooth it out a little bit. It just Make that nice, smooth, perfect. The thing we can do is nice by features, invert, soften. And I'm gonna mask the corners. We polish by features. This is gonna make all the curvature look a little bit nice. Something like this is holding our shape. Now let's be remeshed the same. I'm not liking this flow. Try that again. It's not giving us a great result. Let me try to see remesh guide trick again. flow that I would like to have for this piece. If I could get something like this, I'd be happy. Pretty good result, except for that, that really messed up. You see, sometimes if you see remesh after you have the the guide's done, it can give you a pretty nice result. You can follow the flow that you have. Each of them. Polish that all out to make this obviously more even. That looks pretty nice to me. So all that we're really trying at this point is to, like it's almost modeling in ZBrush because we're so worried about getting that nice clean topology as we're pretty much um, gonna have all the scope work done basically on its own by having nice topology because the only thing we need to do is go to the lowest and start smoothing stuff out and moving stuff around instead of trying to smooth it out with H polish and polish brushes and other stuff like that So as you might notice, we have all this detail going here, but we'll worry about it later. First worry about getting all our little pieces back. Again, I'm going to try to keep the topology at the same density. It's more or less the same. So since these other pieces are pretty similar, we could just copy and paste this one two times. Now for the last one, we cannot do it. It's too different. I'm going to duplicate this one and move it down. And the reason why we're not doing the other ones yet is because first we need to add this detailing to our topology. This one, I think we can just hold down shift, snap the angle. Hold down R to rotate and hold down shift again to snap, snip, snap, to snap. Having difficulties saying that word. Here's the other gizmo. Put it like that.
Now we're almost re-apologizing in this ZBrush. I don't want to Z-remesh this because I want to keep the consistency of this. The one problem that you might see if we now unhide it doesn't make too much sense anymore because we lost that space in between. To fix that, we're going to add some more topology to go underneath of here. Let's go ahead and add some topology. For this, we use the scene modeler and buffer over an edge and go to extrude, put this to edge loop. Now we can just start extruding this out, get some more topology so it can go underneath. Let's do one more. You see over here it's becoming a little bit messy, so I'm going to mask that, invert and polish the features. Let's move this all out a little bit. Same here, let's move that topology out. Make this nice and even as possible. Now we got five. And now you can see it's starting to fill that area up quite well. I don't want to repeat it over here for consistency. So we're going to do one. And let's go ahead and space this out a little bit better. Features. Make sure it's an empty ball. Let's take a really quick look at our lockout. Put that over here. As you can see, we're still missing some features after that stuff happening there. So that's auto group. And I'm control shift clicking the group that I want to isolate. Then we can go ahead and delete hidden. As you can see, we need to add some of that detail. Add a little bit of topology to go like that here as well. And over here. So because we're not sculpting it this time, we can do this very clean. By Adjusting the topology. So what we need, so we'll probably go ahead and that loop over here. Like lasso, click the loop. We can hide it. This one, this one. Now, we don't need to invert it. Actually, just hit Control W. When we can put that in. There. Poly group. I'm gonna get a different looking color. Now we have that detail and now with topology. So what I do want to make sure of is that distance is more or less the same. Right now here it's longer than here. So I'm gonna start messing with this a little bit. And we can use the seat modeler. We can use the slide. Start sliding this over to make this about as even as we can. It doesn't need to be perfect, but I do want it to be a little closer. Now, top, we could probably slide this down a little bit. So you can see my workflow isn't necessarily sculpting too much. I'm more modeling inside ZBrush because it's easier to have control over the shapes and keep everything clean. So the initial stage of the design, since we don't really know what we want to do, we need to sketch it out with DynaMesh and we extract the pieces that are very nice and clean and then we work from there. So now let's do a mask by features. 
then we can start to polish everything up in between the loops. Clean. We have a little bit of a weird shape, so let's take the move, hold down Alt, and we start moving that out. Move directional. Let's move in the direction of our poly loop. They here messed up, but we can just mirror and weld. Get the right side to be mirror and welded. It's messing up a little bit there. Let's this. Let's smooth it all out. Let's create a mask. Invert it and just polish by features. That's very nice and clean. That. It's looking pretty good. So I do notice that the poultry is flown a little bit weird. It would be better if it flows like that. But it's clean enough to, to not worry about it, but just on side note. Although we can try to do a really quick zero mesh to see if it gives us a better topology. I'm gonna keep the groups. Definitely doesn't give us a better topology. Yeah, let's just keep it like this. Enough. So let's go on to the next piece, which is going to be very simple. Just add one beam modeler. Take the edge loop, and we're going to do light and edge loop complete. I'm going to make this a little bit thinner. Let's even out those quads a bit more. Then over here, we need to adjust it a little bit. W to make that into a group, so just like that. Or something like that would clean. Now that we blocked out all those pieces, let's go ahead and let's do the back first. So we're doing everything more or less at the same time. That's often the, the best way to work in ZBrush. You have a very repeating task, just do it all at the same time and refine all the pieces at the same time. If you do it one by one by one, and you take each piece to finish one by one, uh, it's very easy to end up with a non-consistent set, because you're doing it over and over again. Let's go ahead and extract this. First thing that we need to do, Make some corners. So I'm not really going to be explaining at this point what I'm doing. I'm just going to go ahead and extract all those pieces out speed up the video because it's pretty much just repeating the, the same step in step now i do want to talk a little bit about bend curve this is a great little modifier to bend 
stuff into place. You see, now we can just start bending things. So the first thing we need to do is enable the symmetry. Now you can see we can easily modify the shape of this. So it wraps around the body a bit better. It can be a little bit faster than just trying to move it all together with the move brush as it's going to be a little bit more clean. And once we're happy, we can go in and start refining this with the move brush. So I'm trying to get three, but it's not working, so I can just delete an edge loop. Then we can start sliding this. You can see what happens if we see remesh this again. Go back to four, which is annoying. So to clean this up, we can just go ahead and delete. I can find it, delete, delete. Delete some edge loops. Maybe like that. So I'm trying to keep it as evenly spread as possible and then just polish features to clean that up. Now we have three and the resolution is more even to the other pieces. So sometimes you have to do a little bit of manual fixing of the mesh. If the remesh won't allow you to go any lower, which can be quite annoying. I'm reusing the topology instead of starting from an extract because it's pretty similar the size. So it's easier to reuse, it's going to be faster. And most important, the, cons the consistency of topology is going to be more even, which is very nice. Now we have pretty much all the pieces blocked out. Before we do the duplicated pieces, we're gonna refine them a little bit. So the first thing that we need to address is the sharpness. We make them all pretty sharp in the middle. Right now, if you look, it's just an empty block. It's very soft. The first thing that we can do, try to fix this. like that poly group grease not the right way to do this don't need to polygroup it it will destroy what we did so 
crease, crease right there. Of the creasiness of that, which we don't want. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit annoying to try to do it with a crease, so let's do it with topology instead, which is also going to give us a little bit more control. Let's try and add and do a wiggle, edge loop, take center loop. Not working, let's just remain centered. So the correct one that we should be using is the move infinite radius. Put this to edge loop complete. Now we can hold down Alt and just drag. So now we can inflate this edge just like that. Now you can see this starting to do something. Not exactly what we want yet. Go ahead and smooth this out a little bit. It's not going to be the nicest to do in ZBrush. Let me rethink this a little bit. Okay. So I think the easiest way is just uh, to move infinite radius this up a bit then the problem what we had is that we need to move all the edges in between to get it to be nice and smooth but what we can do is we can drag out a mask invert it and then drag an extra mask for this then polish by features that's gonna make it nice and hot right there Careful of that, that remains nice and soft. We can clean this all up a little bit. Now we start to get a nice crease there. Then the last thing to do is we're going to take a crease, do the edge loop complete, and crease this out. Now you can see we have a very nice looking heart mesh so we're not done yet we also need to go ahead and move inflate those those borders that we created also this one looks a little bit messed up so i'm gonna mask that and features let's go ahead and Slide this a little bit. Doesn't really work. I think the easiest one is going to be the edge loop complete. I'm going to just move that. Actually, maybe we can try making a mask of that polygroup. So we control click with the transpose on the polygroup. Then we try it, and that's working quite nicely. Out a little bit, just like that. It's going to be one problem. It's going to be a little bit of a consistency problem. If we start doing it one by one for all the pieces, I'm going to decide to do it all at the same time. But for now, let's do this step that we did all the pieces making that hot edge in the middle now that we know how to do it it's going to be easier we move it just lastly we do a crease you can see it's very nice effect
now that we got all the pieces pretty much here let's go ahead and put the um, let's not put the duplicates just yet let's go ahead and merge all the armor pieces together though Now let's make sure that the polygroups are all even. What I mean by that, all those little trim thingies that should be sticking out need to be one polygroup, then all the others are gonna be one polygroup, like that. You can see the resolution is pretty nice and even. So now what we're gonna do, first let's create a morph target. be creating a custom menu for this because you use morph targets all the time now let's go ahead and store that morph target and i'm gonna try something let's just try inflating this first let's create a layer don't worry too much if you don't know what layers are. Then we need to have a morph target and then we need to inflate it. Now what we can do is we can control click our polygroup that we don't want to change its shape and with the morph brush we morph all this away. Now you can see we're getting a pretty cool effect. It's very fast and consistent. Now the only problem is that it did it too much in my opinion. I don't like how much this is. Now with the layer you can control that change. Now we can very interactively start choosing how this looks like. I think like that looks pretty cool. Let's go into our dynamic. Let's go ahead and increase all. Now we're going to increase the poly groups. Now we get a pretty good idea of what our armor is starting to look like. You can see that's looking pretty clean. A little bit more with the settings. Maybe I'll go a little bit more extreme. It looks pretty cool. Go with something like that. Now that we're done, we're gonna bake that layer. Now let's start fixing the last thing. Go ahead and make some duplicates. Looking back at this, I probably should have done this earlier before the morph thingy, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to duplicate, going to auto group and delete hidden. Let's make our poly groups again, like that. Now we have a new piece. Enable our block out. Now let's just move that down. First thing you see, it's not really matching our block out. But just like before, let's center the pivot. We go bend curve. Now you can see we can start to manipulate this into a shape that's closer to our block out. And depending on how much time and effort you spent on the block out, you want to match this exactly or not exactly. For me, I didn't spend too much effort on the block out. So I'm going to be a little bit free in matching it. Oops. 
story. Go ahead and move the power back. Peace. Okay, we can clean it up afterwards. They will block out to get a better view of what we're actually doing. I think that's a pretty good point to work from. Probably delete that one, I prefer to duplicate this one and move it down. Let's start fixing things up. Let's split this to parts and put each element in its own subtool. So we need to adjust the thickness a little bit at some point. Now let's not worry too much about the thickness. Again, you can see I'm still not sculpting, I'm just moving vertices like regular poly box modeling. I'm still just kind of exploring different options. Don't want to feel committed yet to anything I'm doing. And I think something like that is looking all right. Trying to create a little bit more of an interesting silhouette. Not the most realistic silhouette. I'm trying to push the fantasy view into it. Or something like this. So now what we need to do is we need to fix up little errors. But like uh, it's not necessarily an error, but this line doesn't look very clean. We can just mess that out. All we need to do is polish by features to get a nicer curvature. We'll take a look at before and after. See how the curvature becomes nice. And even same here, let's just go ahead and rid of that one. Let's polish the features. And then we do the same here. I'm avoiding that area because I want to keep that angle that I did. You can try it a little bit. I don't like that shape bulging out, so I'm gonna mask that and polish my features. Here we need to bulge it out a little bit more. At this point, I'm a little bit more worried about um, how the armor is looking because this is going to be getting close to the final. That's super uneven. We can also kind of move it with the move brush. It's looking a little bit unclean. Again, polish by features, clean that up. Here we have a little thingy. If I go to something that's shiny, maybe you can see better. It's a little bit hard to tell, but it's a little bit of kink there. I'm just gonna make sure that's nice and clean. Maybe it's easy to tell the before and the after. You can see this very nice and smooth, and I hear it's a little bit too strong that highlight. There's something like that.
And now we're going to do the same thing for the back, but I won't really speak about the process because again, it's just repeating what we did early with the front. So I'm going to speed up the video. Now that I'm pretty happy with the upper body, we're going to be repeating the same steps for the lower part, the arm, that's going to be the legs. And think a little bit about the render that I want to do. It's going to be something like this, probably. So I know that I'm not going to be working with this. So I'm just going to start deleting that. And I accidentally deleted all the straps. So There's a good opportunity to show you why we're making multiple saves. So now I can just go back. Copy that. Just paste it. I'm gonna have to do that for all the straps in the folder. Which is annoying. So another thing that we can do. Take a strap, go to C plugin, set to master, we can say copy a folder. Then over here we can go C plugin and paste a folder. Just a nice little tip if you ever accidentally delete a whole folder. Now we got our straps back. And that basically happened because when I tried to delete this, you see now it deletes fine. But if I close the folder, then I try to delete. It will say because the folder is closed, it will delete all the folder, which is very annoying. So you want to be careful with that. And I tend to mess that up quite a lot of times. Now I'm just going to repeat what we did for the upper body, for the lower body. Since this time we have an angled hard edge right there. You do want to be careful with the topology because right now if we increase this, it's not going to follow our feature. I'm going to be making sure that we have our topology flowing to the right way. I'm going to select the outer edges, mask them. I'm going to mask the edge that I like. Actually, let's move that a little bit better. Now we can invert that. Now we can polish the features. Smooth that topology out. Now it's following along more or less.
So now that we have our plates all cleaned up, we need to start working a little bit on the straps. And we need to think a little bit on how the plates are gonna hold onto each other. So first off, I don't want to see the underlying plate. That doesn't look very nice. The way I'm going to connect them up is by having little bolts. So that can be a nice little detail as well. That should probably be going like that. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and merge all the armor plates together. And go merge down and always lock everything together. The reason why I want to merge everything together is so that we get a lot of control over our dynamic thickness. So right now the armor is definitely a little bit too thick. So we're gonna go ahead and decrease the thickness. Right now um, it's also a good opportunity to get rid of the segments because we're not going to be zero meshing anymore now instead of having segments we're going to start using a crease by clicking crease we get a crease all around that's looking good this looking very nice and clean you can still make some adjustments i want to round out the chest a little bit It can also be nice to work with a more metal-like material. You can see how the light is reacting to the metal. I'm gonna work a little bit on the connections of the armor. Right now all the straps are broken again and plates are not really aligned in a nice manner. First thing first, let's work on the straps. Sometimes when you're having a hard time to prep the right thingy, you can do an outer group so you can just mask it. And make it a little bit easier. That one's looking quite nice. Clean. Again, even though we already finished our block out, which should be the designing stage, feel free to make any changes to the design at this point. Now we're pretty much done fixing up the leather belts. Let's work a little bit more on the armor plates. One thing that's important is that we don't leave any gaps. So if I take a look right now, here we have a lot of gaps in between the armor plates. 
that's going to be very bad for the low poly. And let's say if we take this piece, and we move it like this. Now when we do the low poly, we just do it like that. We can merge everything in one piece which is going to be way less poly count, which is going to be very nice. Of course, it's also dependent on your specific needs. For example, if you want to have some animation on these plates when they when you run, like they wiggle up and down, you need to make them in individual plates. For now, I'm just going to follow a very simple low poly where we merge everything together which you will do very often when making low polys for games say from the the budget again if nothing what i just said makes sense to you don't worry i'm gonna be tackling that part later on at this point let's just worry about getting the high poly done Start closing all the gaps. That's a mistake that a lot of people tend to make when they first get started with 3D. When they make the high poly, they don't really think about the next step, which is going to be the low poly. There's certain things that you want to avoid in high polys to make the retopology process easy. So, for example, if I leave in some gaps, the retopology process can get a lot more difficult and complicated. Now we don't need to get rid of the, all the gaps perfectly, like a little thing like that doesn't matter too much. I think that's good enough. Now with the move brush we can round our armor out a little bit because I think it's quite angular. Careful of intersections like that. This pushed in too much. We need to push all these bullets out a little bit. Try to inflate it and we can polish the features up a little bit, work a bit with smoothing brushes. Let's look better. I think we can call the armor done for now. But let's go ahead and start putting in the bolts. So the way we're gonna do this is a little bit different from what we've been doing 
the whole time. Because so far we've been doing everything just in ZBrush. But for the bolts, we need to go ahead to Maya for a little step. And clean this up a little bit. So since I'm deciding that I want to have separate geometry for the bolts, I don't want to bake them down into the armor, we need to have a low poly bottom. So we could be going a pant and putting a sphere and placing the bolts like this. But then when we get to the retopology stage, it's going to be a pain to retopologize every single bolt. So we can do something a little bit more easy. We can go to Maya or any modeling software that you're comfortable with. Create a cube. I'm gonna smooth the cube out by hitting three on the hop on the keyboard. As in one, two, three. Then we're gonna go modify and convert polygons, smooth mesh preview to polygons. Now I'm going to delete half of it, I'm going to extrude, control E, then extrude, and then merge edges to the center. This is going to be my low poly for a bolt. Let's go ahead to display, add sub display and enable the poly count. It's quite high, so we can go ahead and reduce the poly count a little bit. We can take every other edge. And that doesn't come out nicely. Let's do something else instead. Yeah, we're gonna go back a little bit because Starting with the cube wasn't the right plan. Start with a sphere instead. Because we need this to come out nicely. So we're gonna go 12, 12. Rotate it, holding down G to snap. Let's go ahead and delete this again. Go ahead and collapse this. Collect that one. Now we're going to be selecting every other edge. We're going to collapse that. Now we're a little bit low on poly count. We'll put soften and harden over here. So we're going to soften everything. And take this one. And we're going to make that into a harder edge. I'm gonna go a little bit low on the poly count, but I'm not gonna go too low. I'm not too worried about the poly count for this asset. Actually, we're just gonna keep it nice and rounded, like that, just to get a nicer render. But of course, if you're doing this for a game and you have a low budget to work with, you need to collapse more stuff up. So we can call this low. Then we're going to do the UVs, so this is going to be very simple, just select everything, normal map, normal based mapping, then we're going to select the hard edge, because if you have a hard edge, you need to put a UV cut, then we're going to go ahead and optimize this. Actually, let's go to tools and use the unfold first. So I'm going to hold down B, left mouse, to make it bigger. I'm going to hold down Control to unfold this. Now we can lay out UV. And then lastly, I'm just going to be putting them over here. So now we have some UVs as well. So that's our low poly done. And we're going to need to make a high poly. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to call this high. Take the low poly. I'm gonna take the hard edge. I'm gonna add a bevel to this so it holds the edge well. 
Now when we subdivide this, it's going to be looking nice and smooth. There's a little bit of a bumpiness, but I don't mind since it's metal. We're probably going to add some bumpiness anyway to the actual high poly. So this is good enough. So we're going to go mesh, modify, convert, smooth mesh preview to polygons. That's going to be our high poly. Lastly, we're going to take the height, make this light. Maybe we don't need to make it light, we can just take everything here, holding down W, left mouse, go to axis, normal. I'm gonna move this in a little bit, that's a bit closer to the height. This one, out a little bit. Just trying to match the high poly as close as I can. Now what we're gonna do, is first let's also do some really quick. Actually that already has UVs, but I'm just gonna optimize them. Now we're gonna take these two. I'm gonna go file export selection. Just gonna put it on the desktop. Let's call this a bolt. I'm going to be exporting as an OPG and export the selection. Now in ZBrush, you can go to a new subtool, to a new tool, I mean. So let's take a, a star. Now I'm going to go import, go to the desktop and import our bolt. Now all that we need to do is go brush. First let's make sure these are two separate poly groups. Now we go brush and we're gonna do create and create an insert mesh. Just click new. Now with our brush First let's go ahead and save the brush, so we can always use it and we don't lose it. Also before we do that, let's quickly try the brush out actually. So you want to hold down control, so it locks the size on your brush size. Actually let's first go ahead and edit this a little bit. Make this a little bit less round. Let's make this a little bit less round. Then also let's go ahead and make the high poly a little bit nicer. A bit hidden. Flip the pipe a few times. Dynamash. Polish on top. Now let's de rematch this in half. I'm simplified a few times. Now with the H polish, I'm gonna add a few little dents here and there. That's kind of like a hammered down metal. Like the bolt has been hit with a hammer to get it into the metal. And to get it to look a little bit less soft. Play polish. Play polish this out a little bit. Mess a little bit with settings. Now you can see we get a little bit of a sharp edge on there, which is nice. And I think that's looking like a nice little bolt. Now the last step, we're going to go to C plugin, animation, preprocess. Making sure that it's not too heavy on polycon, since we're going to be having a lot of them.
we do need to make sure that we have UVs because if we're gonna merge it together and it's gonna lose the UVs if I will load poly if we don't have UVs on the other one. So what we can do is we can go to C plugin, UV master, and just unwrap this. Don't care if it's a bad unwrap, we just need some UVs and then we'll merge. Make sure UV is on and merge down. Now we're going to go to brush and create insert a mesh. Let's do a new one. Now if we drag this down, holding down control, these become quite weird because we have dynamic subject on. Now you can see we have a little bolt. Choose some size. Great, that looks good. And then the problem is that it's laying right on top of the armor. I want it to go in a little bit so we don't get a little gap to light in between the low, the armor, and the bolt. So, what we can do is we can go to brush, go to depth, put the depth minus one. I can see it's nice and inserted into the armor. That is a little bit too much. So put this at maybe seven. Me. You can go save as. Now in our Z brush and brushes, we're gonna save this as. Metal ball zero one. Now we can always use this brush for any project that we're working on. So I don't want to commit to the thickness yet, but to put the balls, we do need the thickness. Duplicate this. And then we're going to apply the thickness to the duplicated mesh and hide our original mesh. Then on this one we can start tracking out our bolts. You can see it doesn't work because we have subdivisions. Delete. Now we can start to drag our bolts out. I in subdivision so we can put them put a bit on freedom. As you do need to put them on a vertex. So anywhere where we have a point, we can put one. And then for the last one, we don't need to add them because we don't have any plate underneath. Although you could still justify adding them if you do like the design better, because we don't have to restrict ourselves to functionality, we can also put stuff for design. But in this case, I think it looks fine without. So adding them. You do want to be making sure that you can zoom out and spin around the model just to see how it kind of reads. So that's going to be all the bolts on the metal. Now let's go ahead and make it. The ladder. Because the ladder is pretty much part of any armor set. You want to be sure to touch up on creating ladder a bit as well. 
Just like the armor plates, what we're going to do first is merge all the leather together. A little bit of cleaner. It's looking nice. Clean. Pay attention to the thickness that it's pretty much even. It doesn't need to be perfect. Get it as close as you can. So I'm liking the connections, that all looks right. Do notice that we don't have one here because I think it would be too busy and still works functionality because we have the bolts holding it up as well. That. So what we're going to do first is um, let's take a look at some leather. So we take a look at this leather belt. Leather consists of multiple layers. So we kind of have like a rougher, beaten up, fussy edge. And then on top of that, we have the nice shiny leather part. So what that means is that I'm going to be adding two layers. The first one's going to be the rough layer and then the shiny leather layer. Check out the topology. Bring that up a little bit. Just trying to get it to go a little bit straighter. So just like that. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. And I like to do the second layer a little bit lighter so we can separate it out and call it. Take the transpose line, I'm going to inflate it by the right mouse click. We just want to place this slightly above, just something like that. Then we're going to take away a little bit of this. Geometry, edge loop, group loop, let's put the group loop at the one, two, do two. First, we're gonna polygroup this all by Ctrl W, make it all the same. Group loop with zero polish and two loops. Take this one and delete header. Still doing a little bit too much. Three loops instead. Demo, visibility, and row. W makes all into a group. I'm gonna go ahead and delete hidden. Now that's looking nice. So I just wanna be able to see a little bit of that rough so we can get a better bake. So what we can do now is we can Segments at zero for this one. Freeze. Freeze level of two. For subdivisions and apply. That I wanna make this edge a little bit softer. I'm going to add some polish. This one, we're gonna make this a little bit thinner. That. See, it's a little bit messy, that shape. Before we apply this, I do want to be sure that we remove the subdivisions. So we put smooth stuff there at zero and now we apply it. And let's get rid of the segments as well. And apply. 
Now, as you might notice, this one doesn't have like a stitch line or whatever, but a lot of belts and straps do, and I think it's a nice detail to add. So I want to add a stitch line. So what you might think is we can subdivide and use the damn standard, and we can start drawing our stitch line. But personally, to me, this is a lot of work, which I don't want to do. But like I said in the beginning, we want to work with topology instead of against it. Since we have very nice clean topology, we can just go here. We can do an insert and a single edge loop. Then we can just insert an edge loop in the middle of that loop that we got from the group loops. I'm going to do this for every strap. It will be very, very fast to do. We already finished. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be using the move infinite radius again. Do the edge loop complete. Hold down Alt and we're going to be pushing this in a little bit. Telling me that it's not symmetrical. Back a little bit in history. I'm gonna mirror and weld. Now everything should be nice and symmetrical. Let's check. So I don't wanna do accidental Q meshes. So I'm gonna do, do nothing. Select the wrong element. Now holding down Alt, we can start moving these lines in. Now we can add some dynamic subdivisions, but without thickness, and just with smooth subdiv turned on, so we can see how that's looking. Now you can see we have a nice little detail. Now all that is left to do is crease. Let's crease every angle that's more than 90 degrees. That's going to be the sides. You can see it's messing up a little bit. Let's put that one 80. Put that 77. Not doing a very good job, so I'm just gonna increase. Let's go ahead and get a better preview. So I'm gonna polygroup everything by novels. Get an extent. Then that my group is gonna be working without a crease, it's good enough. I think we can increase this, increase polygroup. Let's try to increase level very low. The level is a little bit nicer. Now let's apply. Now we've got some nice leather straps going on. Let's go ahead and detail the leather straps a little bit. I'm not going to be adding too much detail, but I want to make it look a little bit more fussy and realistic. Break the layer. I draw it down to my third subdivision. Surface noise. Choose the noise skill. Let's make this quite strong. Like that. First, I'm going to disable the noise and release poly groups by normal. I want to have every single front that's hidden. So like that, let's control W to make the dial more poly group invert and control W. 
Oh, but that's different. Now we can select our border. Let's control click on the edge of the mask to smooth that out. Now let's go noise and mesh. Now you can see this looks quite bad. It's because we need to play with the intensity of the layer. We turn this down a little bit. Polish. Now we're gonna have a little bit of a natural looking variation. That's great. Thing. That's great. It's a nice bumpiness. I'm gonna do it one more time. This time I'm gonna make the noise a lot smaller. Something like that. And then apply it to mesh. Let's again just select the border and apply it to mesh. I'm gonna make it a little bit low. Now I'm gonna do this one more time in the highest subdivision. Smooth it out. I'm gonna do a very tiny noise. We're getting the result I want, so we can try deformation and do some noise here. Yeah. That one's looking better. That one's looking very fine. Because we do need to turn this down. It's going to give them more of a fussy feel. We do need a little bit of breakup in all this. Now we're going to do one last layer. Put the masking. Mask by cavity. We're going to put the intensity quite low. I'm going to try to get as little spots masked out as possible. Maybe something like that. Invert the mask by control click on the canvas. Then let's Increase the contrast of the mask by Ctrl Alt and then clicking on the mask a few times. Now we can inflate this. As you can see, we get some spikes, which is nice. I'm gonna add more than others though. I'm gonna go back a little bit and delete that deformation noise. Because that's messing up, I'm gonna do it with a surface noise instead. Step. As you can see, now we have some things happening over there as well. I'm gonna smooth the mask out by control clicking on the mask and do a polish. Polish by features. Now I'm going to clear the mask. Now the layer. I'm going to put this up a little bit to bump it. Now you can see that we're starting to get some breaker, which is going to make it look more realistic and more interesting. And if, you're very, if you have a very strong one that's sticking out too much, create a new layer and just smooth that one out. I think that's all looking very nice. So that's how we can add some very quick detail to the ladder. So next up, we're gonna add some bolts to the ladder as well. I'm gonna be duplicating this mark. Then I'm gonna bake all the layers. So for the color. Then we're going to take our metal bolt again and let's put the same brush size of 3. And we got to delete the subdivisions. And I think we'll go size of 2 instead. So we can do a double one. Like that. You do want to be sure that you don't get too close to the line because that's going to look a little bit rough. Just a design guide to follow. Don't put stuff too close to the edge.
for example, this line over here is too close to the edge. But for now, I'm not going to be worried about it. The purpose of this video is just going to be to create a fast armor. Let's do the last thread on top. That's going to be our bolt. Now we can do an outer group. Now we can start deleting what we don't need. And delete hidden. Now that we have these bolts, Gonna move them down, shift click on that one. Let's do the same for this one. Also, we do select the wrong things here. I'm gonna get rid of all our armor and just leave the bolt. We'll delete hidden. Now we're going to go to merge again. Make sure UV is turned on. We're going to merge down all the bolts together. We do still have a strap over there and delete hidden. At this point, we can also start cleaning up our ZBrush file a little bit. So, this block out we don't need anymore. So, I'm going to delete it. I'm going to delete it. And again, don't be afraid to delete stuff because we're making the saves with the plugin. We can always go load tool. We can just go back to an earlier version if we do need it at some point again. That's going to keep our ZBrush nice and clean to work with. So right now, there's a few things that we need to do to fix up the bolts. That's going to be adding some indents. I'm going to be starting with the ladder. Also, let's take our bolts, get rid of the low poly. We're not going to delete it, but we're going to hide it. We're going to do an outer group, then we're going to do merge similar groups. So any object that has the same topology is going to get the same poly group. And this might take a little bit, just let it run and wait for it to finish. Now we can just control shift click. I'm going to be hiding all the load polys. So that's going to be a little bit nicer to work with. So these are super close together. We're just going to be fixing up that really quick. So we can take mask lasso, mask that out. Can we move that over a little bit to create some space in between. Now on our layer, let's call this all dense. Take the move brush, put the size of 2, 2.5. Now by holding down Alt, we can dent the area around the bolt. A little bit too sharp. Let's take the focal shift and put this down. Let's try that again. Take 3. And that looks pretty nice. So this might look like an unimportant step, but it's going to give a lot of depth and realism to your model. So anytime that you're doing any dent work on the ladder, make sure to... Any bolt work on the ladder, make sure to dent it in a little bit, because it's going to make it look more like the ladder. And again, I'm just being very fast 
for the placement of everything isn't the best. I think it serves the purpose of teaching you the workflow. Now we have a bunch of dams. I do still want to try to smooth that out a little bit. So we can reuse the poly group, select it. I'm gonna go polish. That's gonna make that a little bit softer. That looks nice to me. And then we're gonna do the same on the metal bit label. Because first we need to go ahead and apply the thickness. But let's go ahead and work a little bit more on the metal before we commit to the thickness. Because right now it's very easy to, to clean up the shapes because it's just a low poly plane. And we can easily smooth stuff out by using the mask, by using masking and polish by features. But as soon as we apply the thickness, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. Happy with how that all looks. This could be a little bit more clean. Don't really like how that looks. Need to adjust the topology a little bit. Let's go ahead and stitch. So we can go ahead and add a crease to this edge. That looks a little bit nicer. But I think for the rest, everything's looking good. Maybe I want to mess a little bit with the shape of this thingy. Try adding a crease here. I think that looks a little bit nicer. Let's pick that little section. That's looking nice to me. Now when we apply, let's get rid of our segments, which we don't have, so never mind. Let me clean that one up a little bit more. This must be a little bit more rounded. Let's go with this. Change the material to a metal, just kind of do one final check. If I like how well, the light reacts. And I think that's looking pretty nice. Again, it's not perfectly clean. I don't want to spend the time on it. This is going to be a very minor difference. Good. So now let's get rid of the smooth subject. Now we're going to apply this. Now we're going to add some groups by normals with an angle of 45. Geometry, crease, and crease polygroup. So, what that's gonna do is gonna add creases right there. So, if we go back, you can see now we don't have a crease. So, now if we go to smooth subtiff and we turn that on, you can see how that's becoming very rounded, which is not what we want. So, we crease that polygroup, and it's gonna remain a sharp angle. Check if everything looks nicely. Everything is nice and sharp. 
up the smooth subdiv a little bit. And what we're going to do now is we're going to convert the creases to actual geometry. So what we can do is we go to uh, to crease and we go to bevel. One thing that you might notice. I have to restart ZBrush. And actually, instead of doing the bevel, let's just keep it as a crease and try polishing that out. And no, that doesn't work. Now it should work, but we need to adjust the crease. As you can see, we don't have a crease over there. So what we can try is we can try to do a group, then reduce the normal angle. Let's just set this back to 90, so we can polygroup the edges. Actually that should be 45, a little bit below, so let's try 40. Just like that. Then we need to go out by hand and fix those creases. Let's go crease and edge loop complete. So this smooths out nicely as well. Quickly double check. Now everything looks fine. Let's see, we have one more over there. That should do it. We got it done for that as well. Now everything's moving out nicely. The reason why I'm not adding a bevel, I'm going to try to polish it. It's just to keep the poly count a little bit lower, because the less polish you have, the better for your seams. I'm going to move this a little bit. It looks a little bit nicer. You can see we can still kind of mess with the topology. Then a good trick is to lower the Z intensity of the smooth. So you can smooth this out a little bit nicer. Just like that, that's looking good. Now we're going to go ahead and apply. Now what we can do is we can go masking, let mask based on crease. So now anywhere where we have crease, it's gonna mask. Also let's add one more subdivision. We can mask by feature by crease. Now we invert that, gonna grow the selection. Let's move that out and then open the contrast. I'm gonna smooth that out one more time. Now we get all those super hard edges and we can do a layer. We can try polish. That's looking much better. Just gonna try to polish this out a little bit more. Now we have something that looks a lot more realistic. Because you wanna avoid super hard edges like this. Doesn't look very nice and convincing, but this looks very nice and natural. And we can also try doing a polish without anything masked to blend that in a little bit more. And mask with intensity. But also like 
invert intensity if you want to harden up edges a bit. So I'll probably keep that 0 0.6 ish. That's looking nice. I think that looks very clean. So we're gonna do a new layer. What I wanna do now is add a little bit of a, a breakup to the cleanliness of the metal. Because I do like uh, more worn out metals. And right now this looks perfectly new. So a very quick trick that you can pretty much apply to anything. To go into noise. But let's clear the mask. I'm gonna make a pretty big, also let's jump subdivision. Let's go on. Actually, like that's okay. Let's make it quite big. And then I'm gonna apply to mesh. Then I'm gonna throw it. Maybe polish by features on top. Then we're gonna go up with subdivisions. Now we get a lot of bumpiness that we have protections. That's because we need to lower the intensity a bit. Now you can see we get some dents to the metal. You might think that's weird because we made a lot of time making it perfectly clean. But by having a little bit of variation, I think it tends to look better. Although it's a little bit too strong on the edges. So what we can do is we can make this one very subtle. So too much difference on the edges or something like this. And then we just take all our plates. Actually we should probably only take the front plates to avoid intersections. And group this all together. Select that. So let's build it. Now I'm going to select that. Now we're basically going to do this one time. I'm going to go up, create a layer, go down, select that one, surface noise, and apply to mesh. Lower the intensity, get a beaten up armor feel. This kind of way you decide on what kind of story you want to tell. If you want a very like used up character, you can put the intensity quite high. But I do want to keep it a little bit more subtle, like that. Now you can see we get quite some nice natural looking bumps to it. So just like we did the leather, we also need to add some stuff to the, the bolts that we have. Low polish. Create a new layer. The symmetry doesn't work because the noise is not symmetrical. So I'm just going to be baking this all down. I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to add an extra subdivision. Actually, that looks a little bit. We gotta go back for the subdivision and get rid of the crease. Increase all and now it's subdivide. Now it will be nice and smooth the transition. For metal, I don't like to do like a super smooth bump. I think this is a little bit too strong. I'm gonna be adding something like this and then later we'll add a polish on top of that to smooth that out a little bit. But I do want to go with a more rough feel, which can look a little bit weird in the high poly. But once we bake that all down, it's going to be looking super nice.
where we do need to fix some of the bolts up. We also got way too far into the metal because we moved it a bit and then the noise as well on top of it. Now that we have all the dents done, we create a new layer, add polish. Now that the polish is done, see the difference. Makes this look a little bit nicer. So it helps polish out a little bit some of the rough uh, transitions that we still had. Like that is looking good. So for now I think we can call the armor done. Still need to do a little bit more work. I think we need to start to focus a little bit on the plot as well. Because we've pretty much been ignoring that for quite some time now. We also customize, customize our UI a little bit more. So a good one to have is the background, so you can kind of change the color when you get sick of it. I'm also going to go to color and grab this bar and put that underneath. Now we can just drag on the bar to choose our value. Let's start working away at the clock. I'm gonna try to keep this pretty simple. I'm gonna be using the cloth, the cloth pool. With this, we can kind of put wrinkles in very quick and easy. And this brush works best if you're on a very low resolution, and if you use small intensity so you have a little bit more control what we're mostly looking for is this here we need a bunch of compression folds for when you bend the elbow then over here we need some more gravitational folds that fall more like this then over here we can either leave this area a bit more relaxed I'll kind of go with the triangle folds. Like that pattern of folds. Use the move brush to shape the elbow up a little bit. And usually when you work with this brushes, you kind of want to push it up. To create folds. Then we can take the normal move brush and we can move it down again. That's going to create folds very easily. Also, I'm going to go back a little bit on one of these. Because I do want to make them asymmetrical. Because that's going to look much more realistic. Although I'm not necessarily looking to create the most realistic piece. Because I just want to make something that looks nice. I don't want to have to worry too much about the cloth itself. Just looking for something that's believable and visually pleasing. So over here with that pool, we're kind of getting this direction that we want. Then it can fall into a more of a chaotic compression, which is nice. Over here, what I'm kind of looking for is folds that will go like that. Also, we cannot get something that's really nice looking yet because the, 
the density of our polygons is very low. So we're just trying to shape up the bigger folds. And then when we subdivide, we can work a little bit more on our stuff. So I do need to be careful with the intersection here with the armor. That's something that I do want to try to avoid. Hiding the arms, kind of checking out the armor. We probably made it a little bit to a high. I'm going to be very quick and lazy. I just move this up a little bit and kind of cheat my way through the fix just to save on time. Don't like the silhouette it's creating over here, so I'm gonna move that out a little bit and make this a little bit bigger. Let's make a new folder. Let's call this armor. Then we can put all our armor stuff in. We can work a little bit on those holes, but they connect up well. We can also hand sculpt the folds a little bit. I'd like to do that with the standard brush and cut the focal shift a bit. We can start to give that compression here, the armor bumping on it. Then let's give this some more gravity. So I always like to start off with the cloth brushes, area a bit. Let's try pulling this down, see what that does. Out. I'm going to be using this direction a lot for this. Symmetry up a little bit, it's called natural as well. Look at the arm. This is pretty much going to be hidden, but here we have a lot of armor touching the cloth, so we can say the cloth will be pushed up over here. I'm not even too worried if that like makes sense bolt like in like a real life scenario if the cloth would react like that. I'm more worried about adding some nice little breakup and some interest to that area. Probably push it a bit like this. Over here. We can point it towards the chest, which is going to mean that the clothing is quite tight. And if you want to go for like a more loose feel, we can point it down to get the cloth to feel more loose. But since most of it is going to be covered, I don't really worry too much about this. So I want to adjust the armor a little bit to be a bit more tight. Because I think right now we have a really big hole. And be very destructive. And take my layers down. But when you're making big adjustments, always do it on the lower subdivision. As it will be nicer. If you do it on the higher subdivision, you're gonna get some artifacts. Then I'm going to move this down a bit as well, create a more appealing shape. So we're going to push this a bit higher, since it needs to be connecting up to those bolts. I'm not working symmetry, I think. I'm going to go back a little bit in time. I'm going to be making sure that we're working with symmetry. I'm also going to try to make this go a little bit lower than this as well. So let's say now that we have everything, it will be a pain to adjust. So let's say we move this, we need to move everything, which is painfully. 
so we can do something else instead. What we can do is we go to subtool. I'm gonna hide the things that I don't want to adjust. This is what I want to adjust. I can go to C plugin, go to subtool master. Now it's not called subtool master, it's called. That's the transpose master. I'm gonna click depose mesh. 100% sure if this is how it works. I haven't used it in a while. Okay, so this is the right one. Now let's go back. I'm gonna copy this. Paste. Same for the cloth. Let's copy and paste. Now this all merged into one low resolution mesh. What we can do now is we can go for example to customize and now we can use uh, see where is it L losing a lot of stuff today deform so that's the one I was looking for kind of forgot the name for a second so what this does it's like a, a lattice in Maya First, let's adjust the points a little bit. Let's also make sure they're working with symmetry. That should be on the X. Let's add some more points over here. Then here. I find some more points here. Now we can start to move this down. So we can match it a little bit better to the body. You want to be pretty careful though, how I move it exactly. Maybe we can try making that a little bit longer, but that's going to be out of the render anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. Just as a quick adjustment. Maybe we can get rid of a little bit of that curvature. So we have quite a lot. Now we can B and V to go to move. Then we can also move this a little bit with normal move brushes. All down a bit. We can also start masking out areas that we don't want affected. Trying to look for a nice fit with the cloth. Don't really like the silhouette, it's trailing. It's very straight and bulky. I'm gonna thin that in a little bit. And I'm just looking for a more interesting silhouette by adding some shape to certain areas. Again, it's getting quite bulky, so I want to be careful of that. Again, since we're working on a fantasy armor, I do want to make it a little bit more unrealistic silhouette. Push that out again. To me, that looks quite nice. So what we can do now is go to C plugin and typo sub tool. And I messed that up. I think it's not working because we switched Z tools perhaps and copied some stuff into this. So that's very annoying. But I do want to show you something that will probably fix it. But let's say you put a lot of work into this and then breaks and you don't want it to break. We can take this, we can export. I'm gonna call this um, legs. Now if we go to our original one, what we need to do is we need to go to the lowest subdivision. Then we should be able to import and import this one. 
we go up in the subdivisions. You see that our, our detail still remains. But since the topology matches exactly, we can import that into here and then we'll adjust the position. Need to go ahead and do that for all the thingies. Gonna delete hidden since we did that part. This one. But that's not the best workflow, so what I'm actually gonna go ahead and do, instead of doing it all by hand, because I'm gonna get rid of the block out, we don't need it anymore. This time, let's try not to break it. So I'm gonna get rid of the body, because I won't be rendering with it. I decided that we're just gonna do a render like this. So I think the better approach would be to go ahead and go see the plugin, typo smash. I'm gonna really quickly redo it, but this time we're just doing everything in our scene just to avoid messing up. So what we need to do now, so we need to mask out, but we don't want affected. That's going to be the clock. Give that a mask. And then now we can start working on this. This time I'm going to do it a little bit faster. Just using the move brushes. This is also why it's important to have nice first low subdivision. Because moving this stuff around will be a lot easier when you have a nice clean subdivision as the first base. Again, let's work a little bit on the silhouette, making it look more fantasy like. And I think this tool was originally created to pose characters, which it's really good at as well. But most of the times when I'm using it, I'm using it to adjust proportions really fast. Again, I'm looking for a more interesting silhouette. Angles, how that's looking. Now let's clear the mask. Now we go to see plugin and T post so now you can see it doesn't pop up with weird stuff. Now it's gonna readjust the position of all our meshes. But since we masked out the clot and we made sure not to move anything of the clot, you can see that the clot remains the same. So if I go in history, you can see it never moves. If I go in the history here. You can see our old mesh and changes quite drastically as we made a lot of adjustments. This is also a good point to kind of go back and forward and see what you changed and if you like it. I do like the changes, but I think we need a little bit more curvature here. Since we're just moving this element and doesn't affect any stretch or whatever, we can just move it over here. Subdivision. Because it doesn't need to adjust anything surrounding it. And I'm just going to push this up a little bit as well. We can do that by hand. So it's a little bit faster since it's a very small movement anyway. So something like that. Yeah, it's looking a lot better. Now let's continue on the clock, and you can see we have a little bit more space. Let's go ahead and add some folds right here really quickly. Another brush that you can use is the clock hook. That one's pretty good as well. I want to be stroking left to right to create these 
horizontal like folds because we need a lot of gravity. So one of the main rules of the clot is when the clot is affected by a lot of gravity, so let's say from this point on, since it's really wide, the folds should be falling into that way. When it's tightened, so maybe around here, folds should be going horizontal. Now we can use the smooth direction to smooth that out and use the move to straighten that out. Then we can hand sculpt to kind of fix the ends up that we get a very quick fold. Do keep in mind that I'm making this very fast down here because in a final render maybe we see something like this so I need this area. So I don't care too much about the look of this. Especially when you're working with limited time, you really want to think where you need to put your time and effort. Let's work a little bit more on the sleeves again. I feel like the symmetry broke here. Probably when we moved it, we didn't have symmetry on, perhaps. It's probably the perspective of tricking me. No, nope. it's the lot that we pulled. Let's match that up again. Build it a little bit more defined. That to get a little bit more shape to our arms. So again, I'm looking for that directionality and fold. Sculpt it a little by hand. And something that tends to happen a lot on longer sleeves. Because we have a lot of gravity affecting it. You start to get fold like shapes like here. And then when you have the elbow where it starts to compress a lot, these can start flowing into the other folds. Over here you can see we can connect this up to there, Put a little bit of diamond shape in there, and like that. And this should be falling down. And again, this should be falling down because we have a lot of gravity. And if the fold falls like this, it tends to look the most natural in multiple positions of the arm, so it's good for animation. And add some zigzagging just to bump the surface. Then we can start pointing some of the folds towards the apex point. And the apex point, in simple terms, is the point that sticks out the most of the body underneath the clot, which is going to be the elbow. So this is where folds should be pointing to. The same is happening here, the apex point is the shoulder, so we have these folds pointing towards there. And then in between two apex points we can put a little bit more of um, a valley, and then the folds connect to them. Sounds a little bit complicated, but I don't really know how to explain it better. I think this is quite the good first subdivision. I'm happy with this. I have a little bit more walls happening here though. That's looking all right. Let's go ahead and define our clot a little bit better. First, let's go ahead and make sure that the connection is working. Because if we don't do that, it's going to be a pain when we need to apologize. We want to avoid any pains. See, we have huge holes, so we need to go ahead and close up. This area is always going to be a little bit tricky. 
So if you're wondering why I'm sculpting my clot and not using Z uh, Marvelous, because when you're making something fast, for me it often works better just to quickly do it in ZBrush, as it's easier to control the result that you want to get and doesn't require as much time as jumping into Marvelous and setting up the simulation, exporting out to ZBrush, cleaning up the topology. You can do it whichever way you prefer, what works best for you. Let's fix the other arm up. <coughs> See, that one is very, very mismatched. Let's quickly check that out. Fill a little bit of a gap. You want to be pretty uh, nitpicky with this. I really try to close up that connection because it's going to be a proper pain to do the low poly all the way. It's also looking a little bit strange. So right now, the part that's looking strange, this part that it's extended out, what usually happens. So you have this cloth that folds, it will fall over and will kind of hide that area. So this should be moving in a little bit. What I'm going to try to do is go mask by features. I'll invert the mask and we're going to mask out everything that's not a hole. Better that. It's smoothing it out by clicking on it. I'm gonna be maybe we shouldn't smooth it. We're just gonna be moving it in a little bit. Out a little bit so it starts to fall over it. Be sure to take your time with this. But again, even if we spend like half an hour trying to make this connection perfect, it's still gonna be time saved. Then messing with it with the low poly, which is gonna take more time and it's gonna be more frustrating. I think that's looking better. Now that I'm pretty happy with it, I'm gonna start merging them together. I'm gonna just shape a little bit. That look a little bit stronger with having square shoulders. Let's put the armor in, see how everything's looking together. Section right there. That's looking pretty good to me. Let's do something like that. Now that I'm happy with our base, this should be a little bit more flat though. We don't have any big holes over there. Now if the head starts falling, so that can be rounded. Now we need to start to apply thickness. First off, let's get rid of our segments and use a crease instead to keep the topology as low as possible, the poly count. Like two. And then let's apply it. So this is a very sharp looking edge. Aspect features. Invert that. That's not really working how I want it to be. With that we're just gonna hide everything and mask it, our border, and hide. Now invert the mask and let's smooth the mask out a few times by control clicking and then polishing. 
I'm looking for something that's more nicely rounded. You can also inflate it a bit to add some detail to it. I'm just going to polish the whole thing out one time. This is going to add a nice little detail border to our cloth. That's looking good. Work a little bit on the graffiti. Interacting with the metal. That looks good. Just a bit with the placement. Since we have subdivisions, I'm going to show you what happens when you use a cloth brush on a very high subdiv. Doesn't really work. The hair doesn't do anything. That's because we have too many polys. So if we go down, it still doesn't work, we have too many. If we go lower, you can see that we can start to use it again. And on this one, you can see it's adding a lot faults but they don't look very nice because when you have too many points it just becomes kind of messy so i would probably only work on the first and second subdivision here to shape up some folds so again you can pull up to create folds then we need to go ahead and increase the length again by using a move brush and moving down some pressure folds although this is going to be hidden by the armor but i do want to get something going here underneath the belt it should be pretty compressed because we have the armor pressing the cloth together and usually i'm just kind of working with the cloth hook and the cloth pull brush in a combination That's all looking a little bit strong. Don't like that shape. So subdivision, just the shape. Now if it's a little bit better. Now we want to be a little bit more careful with the connection. Do you think that little bump is cool looking? Excellent, so I'm going to keep that in. Add a little bit of shape to the silhouette. Here that we do over here as well. Hide some cloth so we can take a better look inside. So we can hide everything except for the areas that we care about. So you can see we still have a hole. Let's get the hole out. Want this to be water tight. Then the one top should always be on top. Although I do not care too much about this area down, I do want to try to keep it as clean as possible. That's nice and closed off. So let's do the same over here. You can see by hiding this part of the cloth, we can really start to see how that actually connects to each other. You can see that we have a very big gap here, which you wouldn't really be able to tell otherwise. But like that is looking pretty nice. The way a little bit. I feel like the arm can be a little bit bigger. I'm going to smooth the folds out a bit. Messy. I don't like this fold. So on a lower subdivision, we can smooth that out. Get rid of it. Now I'm just going to give this another try. 
I think that looks a bit more interesting, but it's quite strong. So I'm going to create a layer. Be on high subdivision. Over here, I don't want to do that like that because we want that gravity fold happening. I do want to be more careful with the silhouette. I'll move this a little bit. Now if we go up, we can kind of check out what we were doing. Now on this layer, we can adjust the strength of those folds. Something like that, it's pretty nice to me. Take that all down. I want to do a little bit of hand sculpting to get a little bit more folds in this area. So I'm be working on the layer so you can easily control the intensity of those felt folds. Now I'm just kind of working on the folds that we got from the brushes. And adding a little bit of stuff to them. So over here, I don't like how that fold is falling very curve like. I think it's better if we compress it a bit more. Now, one very important area of folds at these points where they start folding. So I'm going to put a little bit more love into that, then that can flow into a new fold or just disappear in the clot. Another quite useful brush is the inflate, to inflate some folds. The big fold can fall into here. Here, can start to create that shape that we talked about earlier of the gravity. Okay. One more fold to connect there to add a little bit more cloth. Some more interesting stuff happening. You always want to be making sure if you push something out somewhere, the next way you push it in, out, in, out. That looks kind of cool, but let's get rid of that for now. First, I'm going to work a little bit more on the bigger folds. So here we can connect that fold up again. That, this looks a little bit noisy. I think we can get rid of it on the next subdivision. For now we're working on this resolution, so let's try to push mesh as far as we can on this. In. Just looking for something that I think looks interesting visually. Also, uh, since I'm trying to finish off this project quite fast, just kind of sculpting without a reference, which is never a good idea. If you're doing this for your own project, make sure that you follow a good reference for how the cloth is falling. So you can just go online and look for quite some time on outfits and try to find one way you like how the folds and everything are falling. That will be really helpful to get some of the guesswork out. But all the theory is more or less the same. You have long folds falling down from apex points to folds compressing on themselves. But the cloth is a little bit tighter to the skin. The pattern that you tend to see a lot, but you don't really know what to do, just kind of zigzag the cloth out. You know what, a little bit too much. A bit too intense. Okay. Intensity on that with how that looks now put a little bit more effort into this one again kind of gonna repeat the same thing like big hanging graffiti folds that creating a new fold there depth to this one Now 
This area looks a little bit weird because it should be lowering the this point. Try to do so we can mess this out. Invert it. Blow this down. That I can see that's starting to look more natural. Do the same for the other side. But that's what we don't want to move. See that kind of brought some protections error. If we have on the other side as well. Yeah, a little bit. From the low subdivision, we can start smoothing that out. Get rid of that weird looking thing. Also, take our poly groups and group by normal. But as you can see, it's the other side intersecting through it. So now we can mask that. We can push that in. Space a little bit. Right now the folds are falling a little bit too heavy. Also I'm being very annoyed by our double sided stuff because we keep moving them so we can quickly fix that to a group by normals. Now we're gonna go all the way up to the lower. So let's make our layer. Delete low, we can see if we can reconstruct this so we can. Go here. Delete is a better way of doing this. And go to our low subdivision. And go here. Now I don't want to delete everything. I do want to keep a little bit of breathing space. So let's do it like this. Let's auto group. I'm going to be selecting those. And what we can do is delete hidden. We shouldn't be having layers when we do this. Let's group this all together. Group this all together. And hide everything and take all. Not the low subdivision. Let's go ahead and delete hidden. It's gonna take a little bit of time. Now we want them to deal with our intersection errors. Work a little bit more on the shape, but I don't want to spend too much time on it. Nearly yeah, gonna call it done and move on to the next step. Now let's call it done and move to the next step. That's going to be adding some stitching details. So wherever this cloth would be soon, we need to have a line. Let's use our lazy radius and be creating a layer. So a morph target. We need to subdivide this one time. That looks better. Let's create a layer. Just like that, we put in a line. With smooth directional, we can smooth that connecting piece up so we don't have a little dent. Like that. Then the other side, let's fix that. Let's turn on symmetry. Drag into that and smooth direction that line up like that. This should probably be a little bit more over here so I'm gonna redo that. Just delete the layer, create a new layer. 
probably subscribe one more time. Get rid of that pixelated look. And that was a bad idea. So I restarted my ZBrush and loaded my latest quick save and re it a little bit. So it might look slightly different. It's more or less the same. Off target. Get our lazy radius up. I think like that looks great. Go ahead and fix this one up without symmetry. I do want to put them in with symmetry just to make sure that the placement is about even. On the back, let's do pitch line like this. Go hold on shift to snap, create a straight line. Then we're going to be doing the same on the sides. Just going to be holding down snap, drag a straight line. With this, I'm going to do this without symmetry because it will be a pain to clean the other line up. That can be our stitch line. And the reason why I'm placing it here is because it's more or less in the middle of this traps more directional big brush stroke down pull up the line let me get rid of that pixelated look that you see now let's go to the next step I'm gonna be using the inflate brush with a lazy mouse put the radius up Maybe a value of 5. And I'm going to inflate the line with the intensity, maybe a bit smaller. To me, this looks a little bit more like a cloth coming together and looks a little bit nicer to look at than a single boring line. In the end, when I sculpt, I don't necessarily care if it looks the most realistic. What I mostly care is about how it looks visually. If it's visually appealing, I will put it in. But of course, I do still want it to resemble realism. I don't think we're getting a good result on that one. I'm going to undo that a bit. That needs to be smoothed out a bit more before we try. I don't want to spend too much time on it. It's a little bit messy, but I'm fine with that. This one, we can just go up and draw a straight line down. That definitely doesn't work. Up the lazy radius a little bit. I'm just following that damn standard line that we put in. Now I'm going to be super lazy and not finish off the line because we're never going to be rendering this part anyway. I'm fine with it looking a bit bad down there. Now we just have a little bit of seam information, which is nice. We'll be doing the same on the other one as well, on the sleeves. And hide everything, take the sleeves. Then again, we're going to be starting off with a damn standard. Load intensity a little bit. And just on the middle, we drag out a line. Then just kind of see how it looks on the side. I'm not too worried about the lines. Again, I'm not trying to place the perfect seam line. Just showing you the workflow. I'm 
it's gonna hide to get a better ending. Let's go over to the inflate brush. That's pretty nice looking line in my opinion. But most importantly, it's fast. That's basically how I go about adding seam lines. Now there's one more type of line that we can add, and that's like a stitch line. That will be around here and around the ends here. It's going to be a little bit different because it's not where pieces are sewn together. It's just where there's some stitching for the back side. So we can draw this with the damn standard the same way, but we can be a little bit more lazy about this. What we can do, for example, because we like save. We haven't done that in a while. Yeah. All the sides. That every side we want. A little stitch line. First, let's just make sure that we have similar poly groups. So these are all our sides. These are all our frontal floating parts. So I can mask this. Grow this a little bit and sharpen it out. Visualize how far that goes. I do want to have a little bit of a nice distance from the borders. It can be a little bit further away, so we're going to smooth this out again. Proper subdivision, so it's easy to grow that mask. Tighten it up. And that looks pretty nice to me. There's one th problem, we do still need to take away a little bit from that. Low subdivision. What we can do now is we can go into this mode that we just see this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to visibility. Growing this. Something like this, and then we unmask that, and now we unhide everything. And that didn't do anything because instead of unmasking it, we need to mask it. Now, if we unhide it, you can see that we have these little lines around the border. Now, all that's left to do, let's go to the highest subdivision. I'm gonna be making this mask stronger. So now we get some lines. Now I'm gonna smooth this mask out again. We'll be smoothing this out on the highest subdivision, so the blur is a little bit less strong. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna deflate this. We should be doing this on its own layer. You can see that we're losing the mask when we do it. Not too much of a problem. We can polygroup this. Now create a new layer. Now we can select that again. And let's grow that out again. Smooth out the mask. Just control clicking on the edge. Now let's deflate that. Now let's drop a few subdivisions. I'm gonna smooth this mask out. Let's sharpen the mask. Control Alt clicking, Control clicking to smooth out. Now I'm gonna polish. Maybe these lines are a little bit too strong, but I'm not too worried about it. I'm mean, too thick. Now let's go to the highest subdivision. Mask this. Throw this out. I guess we don't really need a mask, we can just throw a big polish on top. We shouldn't polish by features, we need to do the other one. Let's go ahead and polish that. 
And what the polish is, it's basically a smooth, just like a smooth brush, but over the entire mesh. But since we're on such a high density, it's not really going to smooth anything out, except for these thingies over here. Now we can go ahead and decrease the layer effect, so it's a little bit less strong. I should definitely have to make the mask a little bit thinner as it's too thick, but I'm not going to be worried about that. A really quick fix instead of going back and fixing it properly. By decreasing, by growing the visibility more to decrease the mask more. So that you can take the pinch, you can start to pinch this together a little bit. This is quite a dirty fix. That does work and it's a test, so this is the one I'm gonna be using. Now I'm just gonna be merging that together. Let's decrease the visibility a bit more because I want this to be a subtle line. Something like that. No. Subtle. Also, just like we did with the metal, I want to add a little bit of noise to this. So on the lower subdivision, we add the noise. Pick and apply the mesh. Then in layers, let's go ahead and turn that off and on. See what it's doing exactly. You see this makes it look a little bit more natural. Let's decrease the strength of that as well a bit. So just like that. And again, I'm not gonna add a whole bunch of work on the cloth. So I want this to be quite fast and I don't wanna do a deep dive into detailing. And I'm not gonna detail the metal up too much. And with another video more focus on detailing some other time. The one cool trick that I do want to share with you is to add some memory faults to plot. You can use the damn standard. Let's put the lazy mouse up a little bit. And then you just want to drag a line like that. Maybe decrease the brush size a bit. First we draw one line, a bit bigger, like that, and then one more underneath. You can pretty much put them anywhere where you need some breakup. Another one that you can do is to make a triangle, so I'm holding down Alt, put that line up, another Alt track, and then without Alt, we connect that triangle. Super nice little trick to add some detail and break up the cloth. Although I'm skipping quite a lot of steps here, because we should be working a lot more on the folds. Pretty big ones. And then all that we have left to do is take our layer, make this more subtle, for example 0.3. That's a good way of adding some memory faults to cloth. So usually when you do metal, you do want to add, add uh, edge damage. A usual way of doing that is using the trim dynamic and just trimming away the edges, which will take quite a lot of time. So I'm gonna do it, but not for all the pieces. I'm just gonna be doing it for one piece. So you can also kind of see the difference in our final result. And I'm gonna be speeding up the video.
Either we have a little bit of massive edge there, I'm not quite sure when that happened, but we can go ahead and fix that up in a little bit. If you have a little issue like this, easiest way is to go with the H polish. Hold down Alt to work up to it, and then release Alt. Just kind of alternate between holding on Alt and releasing Alt. It picks that up. Just like that. So again, holding down Alt. Now I'm not holding Alt, holding, not holding, not holding, holding, not holding, and holding. Releasing again, you can see how we can clean up the surface like that. So you can see this adds some nice little detail thingies. But for the sake of speed for this material, I'm not going to be doing it on every play piece. But usually when I'm working on something professionally or personal piece, and I have the time, I do this on every plate, so it does add to the quality of your work. Then one more thing that you can do after you add edge damage, you can kind of mess with masking. So we can go ahead. Just let's adjust the polygroups. I would just want to have polygroups for the sides. Let's group that all together, invert and group together. Now what we can do, it's not going to work well on here because we don't have messy details like that. We can try to go to masking and mask by smoothness. Now let's make a new morph target. I'm going to invert the masking. Drag the transpose line and just inflate this a little bit. Go back one step. Create a layer so we get more control. Masking, mask by smoothness. Invert and inflate this. Now let's unselect that. Now we take all this, we mask it, and hide everything. Now we're gonna smooth that mask out. Control clicking on it a few times, make it nice and smooth. Now invert. Now we're gonna use our morph target on a very big size. To morph that all away except from where we have the edges. So the idea now is that you inflate that edge wear a little bit without messing with anything else. I'm going to go back and invert the mask. We can get rid of this hard edge by doing a polish by features. Features a normal polish. Let me check out our layer. See that we get a pretty cool effect. To me, this is quite blobby and soft looking. This is a little bit stronger, giving me more of a metal feel. You can also push this up, let's say two, if you want to have the edge damage a bit more pronounced. So we can take metal looking material you can kind of preview how that looks so this is quite messy put it to one nice and damaged now of course depending on how damaged you want your final metal to look like think a little bit about storytelling how new is the armor how we use up is the armor we can control the intensity That's basically how I add my edge damage to metal. You can and should do a lot more, like 
and then scratches and all that cool stuff. But for this series, we're going to be doing that in Substance Painter to save some time. Everything needs more sculpting work and more details. But I think this is good enough to demonstrate the workflow. So let's go ahead and start to think about creating the low poly. So I think one important step that uh, newer people tend to miss and not think about is the preparation of the high poly. So what that means, if we create a low poly for this, we cannot make it all with a big hole. We need to have some caps. What I mean by that, at some point we need to take our low poly and instead of doing it double, we need to create topology like this. Again, if this doesn't make sense, if you're not very new to low polys, don't worry. I'm going to show you how to do all of that. But for now, we need to do a little bit of preparation. So for the arms, we need to add a cap. So the way I like to do my caps is I take a cube. Scaling. And lock. Up. Let's take the transpose line instead. And I'm doing the wrong thing. Messing up our armor. And I messed that up completely. So again, let's create a cube. Let's insert it this time. Scale it down. Move it to the armhole. Rotate it so it looks nice and straight. You don't want to go too close, like this. It's a general rule, you want to go kind of out so you don't really see the cap. It will be hidden by shadows and I mean, the occlusion and other stuff. And depending if you have hands, you can put it a little bit closer or further away. Like this is good. Simplified a few times. Delete lower. Now just mask this out. Control W. Hide everything else and delete hidden. I'm going to polish the features to get rid of that jacket edge. And Z remesh this. And then let's mirror and weld and add some thickness. One thing to make sure of that you're not. Uh, how you say it? So you're not clipping through the mesh like this. So you want this to be pretty watertight, but you don't want to clip it through. So usually what I tend to do is I just kind of pull it all through and then I kind of push it in again. Make sure nothing's intersecting. And let's go to the next one. Clip it through. Now we can go ahead and apply. First, let's make this a little bit nicer by smoothing it out. Apply. A good way to really easily spot intersections like this. This can be still a bit of, a little bit hard. We can go to render, put this to not best. We're going to run and put this to flat. So now if you have a little bit popping through, if I push this through, you can see it will be very, very obvious. It doesn't seem to happen anywhere, so that's good. Now we can put it back to preview. Now we need to do the same over here. We need to cap this mesh off. So let me hide the armor for now. And then I'm going to be following like a more of a workflow for plot simulation. Let's say if you want to simulate this, you need this to be double. So then you'd have plot simulation happening 
on the long part with gravity and then on top of here you don't so we can cap that off over there if you're not planning on adding plot simulation i would cap it somewhere here but i would say this is the most proper place the mesh is more flexible this does mean that we need to add more topology be the exact same workflow We're gonna go back to render to this to flat, see if we missed anything. Apply. Let's also make sure that it's caps. So this can be a little bit hard to see, so we can add an extra light. Intensity way up. Stop to actually see what we're doing. Again, to render flat, I'm going to push that in as little as we can. That doesn't seem to be cap, a gap, and same for that one, that one is fine as well. Now this one plays left and that's going to be the neck area. To do this one the workflow is pretty much the same but a little bit different. This time we want to work with a sphere. Now we pull this down, move it up. Make it about as big as the hole. Mask this. And delete it. Turn on double sided, by features, make a nice smooth that edge. Now let's put this in half. That thickness. Don't put it too close to the cloth. We'll leave a little bit of distance. Usually you won't really see this because you'll have the neck coming through and hair falling or whatever. But for now you'll see it because we're not adding a head. That one looks fine, so let's apply. Again, let's put the light, double check for gaps. And that all looks good. Now we've successfully kept our cloth. Let's give this the same color. See now that's the same color, it will also be a lot less obvious. You want to try to not add a thick edge, so try to make it more blended in. This should be a subtle transition, it isn't really too visible. and fix that little intersection arrow. I'm going to get rid of that inflate because we didn't add edge wear everywhere, it's messing up. We actually have a little bit of an issue, it seems that we moved it at some point with the move brush and then messed up the bolts. We've got a few bolts to fix, we can just use the move brush. Make sure they're not floating on top. That's looking better. And that's gonna be it for our high poly. I'm not gonna go crazy in detail, I'm just trying to do something fast to demonstrate the workflow. In the next part, we're gonna be going into Maya, and we're gonna be retopologizing this piece and baking it in Mama's set.